We got the map ends ready, so let's put them up on the screen for you again. Best of three. We got Bind, Breeze, and Split. What are your thoughts? I mean, <laughs> if we do get the third map, I think Mech are going to be sweating a little bit because the last time that they <laughs> played Split was against Fnatic that time in Stage 1. For Bind... 22-21, was it? Yeah, 23-21, ah. I think. Oh so, yeah, Chron it's I a long night. It, it, and it was a long time ago, all things considered. But That's Ascend, true. their form on Bind has been really solid recently. I think this has been the best map example of them going, all right, we're going to play the Ascend comp, right? We're going to yeah. play what we used to, put Monster and back on those agents. Oh, it didn't work. We need to do something else. And so there has been a change. We've seen Starkso go over to that race, and it's been working a lot better with nice wins over G2 and FPX. So, like, that's a great place to start if you're Ascend. Oh, since our agent ban, or agent select, I guess, is going to be a bit delayed. We have a PC issue from the players. Don't worry about it. We'll be in very quickly. This gives us more time to theorycraft about what mm. could actually happen. I want to talk about Bind first. Of course, it is sure. our first map. What do we expect? in this agent-wise, but also in terms of pure team play and gameplay. I mean, Mech starting on defense, and you just pointed out before how important for certain teams, aka Ascend, who are struggling <laughs> on pistols and everything, for them to win attacking siders. I know we're talking about agents and whatnot, but just from a top-down view, do you think we could decide that map on the first half alone? Uh, knowing that Mech rely heavily on defenses. Ooh, I'm, I'm throwing this out as a postulation because we have time, and I think it's an important yeah. question of just going... Knowing what you've said, knowing what I know about Ascend and pistols and knowing Mech's attacks, how does that weigh up? Do we know in the first half? Yeah, I think when you look at Mech, like, because they lost to Na'Vi, that's mm. the only map that they've played of it so far this stage. Both right. their attacking and defensive side was equally bad. Like, their attacking side a little worse. So I do think that you could have, like, a 9 free half, let's call it, in favor mm. of Mech on that defense. Mm. And I still think there's a chance for Ascend yes. to bring it back because that's yes. been consistent and common, right? But I do think that Ascend... I could see them going 5 nil down and still being able to pull it back. That's what they've been able to do. I think it takes a while for them to adapt to what the team is playing, but Ascend have changed stuff up. Mech is still sort of running what they used to. Maybe there's like a fade in there, for example. Considering they didn't work the last time they played, are they going to sort of keep the, the nose to that specific grindstone or change their comps and agents? Well, 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 that is a question that's on our mind. And you know what? I want to ask what you guys think about all this. We're all always running polls on social media to see what you're thinking of it. And I want to see. All right, 55.4% going for Ascend, 446 on Meg. I call that pretty darn equal now that we can... That? Yeah, that's the question. I think there's a lot of hopium there for Meg. I thought you, it'd be yeah. a, lot, a lot lower, but I do think that that's because people know, like... Mech are that kind of team where they, yeah, they struggle for it, but like I can see it where like Mech qualify for Copenhagen, they kind of go, oh, and then they just absolutely obliterate everybody sure. to get the top seed. That's just what they do. They look wonky up until they get to like a threshold where it's qualifying for a Masters event or even Champions, mm. and then they just slap everybody above them. It's that this is the most pressure that they feel if they get that off their shoulders. I think they've got a good chance to beat Guild. I think both these teams can really take it to them in their, their playing game, for example. You know, I once called Mech one of the most resilient teams I'd ever seen down to a micro level, like they would be down an atrocious amount of rounds, their round diff would be atrocious, and then their faces wouldn't change, it'd just be dead still, and they bring it back round after round after round. I truly think maybe without analysis of some of the small, more micro regions of the world that they would be the most resilient team I've ever watched. So I do think this is an opportunity for them if they start off slow, even though we've you know nailed them on the attack, there's still possibilities. Yeah, I'm just overall wondering, like, okay, we've seen some stuff like Shados' performance has been really weak. I think he has the worst KD on this map, specifically when he's playing the Sky. They have tried a bit of Fade, for example, with Redgar, and it's something that actually Ascend haven't gone for, and a lot of oh, teams sage. are starting to move over as well. Such a good Sage. Yeah. Ooh, wait, you know what I mean? Just, just put him on a comfort. You need it now. All right. Now, later than never. Okay. Chronicle on the what? raise. Just what? Immediately. <laughs> Okay. I think, yeah, so Ascend typically playing what they usually do, but this is a massive change. What? The only team that we saw playing Cypher on this map was FPX instead of a Viper. So, Mech, this is like the CIS direction, I suppose. It makes sense why FPX were playing it, right? So Nats on that Cypher needs to sort of make that space, right? I think Soy Getsu struggled when he played up against Ascend last time, up against Ascend the other week. So I think Ascend are looking at this comp and going, well, we dealt with FPX playing this. Mech look a little bit worse than them currently on form, so we can take this. Oh man, I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, baby, I'm excited. Look at that. I mean, wow, you got Regar, Omen. Yeah. I mean, I this mean, for me is just a playground. 
think about how how well and mechanically well Chronicle's been playing. I know he has those rounds where he really does drop the ball utility-wise, but just think mechanically, if we take away the utility, I truly think he's been doing a pretty good job with the gunning department. Yeah. So it's not... It's I not... think they've taken a leaf out of Mech's book, uh, a sense book even, of just like, oh, we'll swap the roles, we'll put yeah. Chronicle, he's the one that's popping off, we'll put him on the duelist. I think it's one of the first few times we've seen him on Raze, but... Like, this could be the thing. This could be the opening for Mech. Oh, this it's, could be huge. It could be it. It could be it. And we'll have to see how it all comes down on Bind. We got Mitch and Tom to take you through it. Enjoy. Thank you so much, Milosh. Wow, Tom. This is going to be a monumental matchup. We have got champions from champions and from Masters 3 here. I mean, you, you got to be excited to kick this one off. Yeah, we got a rematch and we get one of the maps coming up first that actually wasn't played within this grand final. So it's going to be an absolute banger. Hopefully it's going to be a three mapper. But firstly, we got to meet our teams. Got a fresh face to send coming into this season, but I was expecting to say, you know, Mech, they've kind of been struggling and I want to see something different from them today. But it looks like they've come in with some new intentions. I'm excited to see what they've got moving on into playoffs. Yeah, I, I think the the change of like some of the minor changes, obviously Nat's going on to an agent which has been his bread and butter basically since the very beginning of the game. So I don't think that's anything too crazy. Redgar going back onto a controller again is is not the most mind blowing thing in the world. Defo playing Sky and the switch for Chronicle to now take over that raise might give him a little bit more space to sort of play as that secondary role. But it's not something he's really done much before. It's always been that sort of pure duelist. The jet is what we brought this guy forward for. So it's going to be intriguing to see if it works for him. Yeah, it definitely is. We're diving into this first round of Sand on the attack. Moving in for a little bit of control over Lamps. They've already put their Trailblazer through, but Shados goes down right away. Redguard now trying to answer back up. Good for one kill, but that is all mech. Really not putting up a good hold on the site. Chronicle can't get back in there, waiting for his teammates. I'll try to retake this control together, but a tough one ahead of them now that that spike is planted. Oh, okay. Nats has managed to quickly swing and give them a man advantage. Great flash. Should be a trade, but never mind. Vax's not going to get anything. And Nats has come to party already. Three kills in the pistol. It leaves Monster. He's been a superstar so far. This tournament A first goes his way. Looking to try and isolate the jewels, but he can't quite close out defo a good attempt but it's mech to walk away with it in the end an impressive retake and it's off the back off the back rather of their consistent performer in nats this guy has been delivering in every single game it doesn't matter whether it's been a victory or a loss whether it's been a strong mech or the weaker face that we've seen slip through sometimes nats has been that consistent factor for them yeah. and he comes in here with I mean, sure, it's three kills overall, but it's that double to get them right back in. Like, we're saying, oh, the spike is planted now. It'll be tough. And I'm thinking that's because they get to go to post plants. But just as they try that, Nats just swoops in and saves the day. Yeah, I think it's also going to create a very different dynamic on this map because... Firstly, you're going to be moving in with a, a single controller, which it definitely have its difficulties. We see how he actually likes to lurk through when it comes to those takes in towards the A site. But it also changes how the attack's going to work out for Ascend because you've got a very different defensive setup that revolves around a lot more information in terms of he, having not only that double initiator, but then also having Cypher, which kind of works as a quasi-initiator anyway, and all of his traps, which are going to cause you issues when you actually try and make your way in. Ton of difficulties there for Ascend to deal with, and in this round, well, there's a oh, this whole bunch. Nasty. It's so nasty. He seems to have dealt with the first bit, and he's able to get out of there for free at least. So not the most horrendous of starts. A trap play avoided, but Monster's gone down, trying to sneak his way through on a. You know, that's a play that. I think I know Nats for the most. Again, this guy just constantly putting his wall up, moving down into lamps and taking the control on the attack side. So no surprise that Mech are ready for that kind of Viper okay. play on the other side. Going out. That's a, a little bit whiffy from Chronicle. I, he's someone who's going to be in a much more aggressive role for, I guess, one of the first times. Like, you have to bear in mind, he did also pick up Chamber for a bit, and that was incredibly aggressive. Like, I still remember his split play was basically just him running down mid and then trying to TP back out again. So it's not anything too wild, and I think it's a role he can definitely take forward. Then again, though, I am liking already. Like As said, if you were even 
a Nats fan going back just a year, you will have loved to watch the way that he would set up into those cameras. Like almost use it as just, a, I'm going to sit here until somebody peeks me. And then they take that information and run with it. And even just the little trap setup they had there, it, it's not something mind blowing. And especially if you have someone like CNED who has the ability to escape, it might not be too impactful, but it is going to allow you to hold on to quite a lot of ground. This goes here. I'm sure there's many more setups in mind here for Mech. They're going to need to deploy some of them to deal with the sends round, the buy round coming out of them here as they power Cam's on up nasty. that economy. Yeah. Camera getting a ton of information for them. Yeah, and the thing is, they're again playing the same as they were on long. They got the cam up top, got a nasty position on it. It's going to spot them. Maybe they don't even destroy it. But there's an immediate flash coming out from Defo to take a kill or disorientate those players either way. It's a fantastic setup. The problem is Ascend have left a trap outside of Hooker. They don't intend to go this way. They're moving over towards the safe site, taking an orb, slowing the round down completely, and they don't intend to make any decisions just yet. Still a minute five on the clock. Yeah, patient in their play. And a lot of the reliance in these sort of entries is going to come in onto Starzo. Was thoroughly impressed with how he played in their game versus... <laughs> oh, oh my God. I was going to say versus FPX, Monster's already down. That's a huge issue. One of your controllers already gone. The one that's likely going to give you access into the site. And he has to flash up. Oh, it did so nasty, these combos. This is why you have Defo switching. It's so that he can play aggressive just around the abilities of Nats. Lots of control. And bought back by Mech. They've managed to hold on to Lamps. So Ascend, you know, as they get this spike down, there's not really anywhere safe for them to go. Crossing back over to mid, still needs a couple of fights, but they've got to be quick. Okay, there's the fight one with Redgar going down. Starzo's just walked in. He's just taking control. There were two players in there. I thought maybe that could surprise them. And despite the fact that both are low, Starzo's getting the heal. There's a flash up. A run out! A knight! To close the round, Starzo's taking out the blade. And 18 HP left, Tom. The heal that he got just moments ago from Vac saved his life. He must have had no bullets. I like there's there's no way that was his decision making. There's absolutely no way because that's the most minuscule of differences between the round going the other way. Yeah, he sprayed. He, I don't think oh. he hit a single bullet and then just went for the knife instead. I can't believe that's the first way that said they're gonna get around on the board. And Mitch, as a bonus round for Mech, that's incredible. 18 <laughs> HP is the difference to winning it. Yeah. Yep. One second on the play, you cancel that heal, you make that player hide one second earlier when that flash comes through. It's a completely different round. Like, that's just, just wild. Just wild. Coming into round number four here, Mech. They've got their buy up, as you said. Fantastic round for them as they now set the scene, set the stage to potentially ruin Ascend's economy completely, leave them with nothing. Nice swing by Starzo, though. It's a good opening. Flash through. Here's where Mac really go back out and fight for the site. The kills are going their way. Redgar unchallenged on the long peak, and Defo's able to double up. This is a secure site for Mech. And an almost impossible clutch for Cena, Tom. The spike is down. It's easily under Mech's control. And, and look at the agents that he's up against. You're going to have a smoke back up in a second to secure Hookah. And then flashes coming online over the next 10, 15 uh, to deal with and, and get that information. This is tough. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Did they flash long and clear him? They know where he is now. Okay. Timing's gone a little bit off there for Redgar. He had the angle correct, but he isn't going to manage to catch him. Now, bear in mind, Cena could take this spike and run. I have the spike. Like, it, it's a relatively long time in terms of rotation, but he has enough on the clock to actually do it and can even just try and bait them out try and confuse them but you're not seeing any sort of rotation just yet both players looking to try and stick this one together and that's been spotted there's still one man to go though defo waiting ready with a flash in hand he's been so good at hitting the timings on all of this utility but cnet's gonna cross into the site instead try and bait him out he's gonna have to stick this one though I yeah, hope he could force both fights out there that would have been a big mistake by mech and you can see exactly why Two HP left, but the timer had already ticked, and Mech have secured the round three to one. Hey, that was a tough clutch, and he damn he came damn close. A few extra seconds on the clock, and maybe he can get it done. But coming into this round three to one with a bunch of ultimates online for Ascend, 
That doesn't really change the outcome, though. We said previous round was the fantastic. Is, this one's a win for Mech. The, the problem is the, the money, though. Like, both teams are kind of in a weak spot. CNED's going to have Tour de Force. You've got a showstopper, that rifle that he saved, Seekers, and then the other two online. Like, although weaponry technically favors Mech, yeah. I am not convinced with them going into this round. The only real, but like, if they were on the attack, I'd almost say it favors Ascend. But because they're on the defensive side, the judge is viable. And so is the Spectre. Yeah, so they can definitely bridge the gap on some of those weapons. But yeah, I see what you mean, man. A showstopper off the back of Seekers, for example. A rifle in the background, a tour de force. Tour one de force kill, alone. one plant, anything <laughs> like that. You've got a potential Viper's Pit to play with. You can see Spike moving over towards Labs. Now there's the fight. A monster's got the kill. That is going to be the Pit online. The showstopper connects. Nats is down. Weapons can be upgraded. Starzo's in the spawn. But he's gone down, Tom. That could have been a critical er error. CNET's at least recovering something and making this a little bit better. And a judge inside a Viper's pit. I mean, Monster, it looks like he might even have this locked down himself. It's going to be left all onto Chronicle. Yet to really see him turn up in this game so far. First goes his way, but bear in mind how low he's going to get over the next couple of seconds. Almost has to try and back out of there just to give him a chance. And while Monster as the executioner it's almost alt spam to get the round over the line for a send but when you see the economy for mech in the next round you can see why it's worth it yeah we have to be clear that was a huge commitment in an ideal world you don't mm. want to go into a round use a viper's pit a tour de force a showstopper and seekers all at once that's a huge risk and if it's because you're gonna ruin your opponent's economy and take control of the game sure and so the reward is there for them in that regard. They get to build up a little bit of money, but it was necessary for them to do that based on the, the mistakes they'd already made. That's a huge recovery of an early stumble uh, out of Ascend and now a chance to, to really reset this and come in with fresh faces. Oh, that's an aggressive push out of Redgar. I like the attempt when you've only got pistols, but Ascend were more than ready. You can see, look at this. They've just spread the net on this. They want to catch any aggression out of mech. Take no oh, yeah. risks. That single kill alone will almost pull an entire rotation again, though. It's going to be the cam placement of Nats that keeps them in the right position, but Defo already gone, and unless there's going to be some real pistol magic, this site is going to fall. Oh, nice shot out of Nats. Maybe we won't count out the pistol magic just yet. Shainos, maybe with something else to say. Nope, not quite. <laughs> Round secured decently in the end. Ascend coming out with a kill on everyone. Getting those ults back online slowly but surely, chipping away. And three to three. But look, this is the. It was a weak round out of mech. They get a little bit of damage. It's so so. This is where things really matter. And again, they're coming in with even footing in terms of the economy. Uh, that, as in the hardware they're bringing to it, their shields are a little bit lighter, but they make up for it with those ultimates. Problem mm. is, they're, they're not the four heavy punchers, heavy hitters that Ascend have. Uh, you've got a, a Cypher and an Omen in there. Not going to help that much. No. Rekar again, trying to play a little bit more aggressively deep into mid. It seems to be a spot that they really want to challenge for, but it, it is quite intriguing that a lot of the way they're playing this is firstly not so much around like the one ways, which is really what we sort of testament this agent to, but also it's not like there's any sort of stack up. Like, most of the time, it's been this play around uh, Defo and Nats that has been the aggressive sort of push. And then you've had Chronicle sort of as this rotator, which, again, is maybe a little peculiar considering the agent he's currently playing. So we'll have to see how this one goes. Again, a lot of information found by the Tigers on either side. And already, they're starting to pressure into B. Yeah, they're spotting some players, but it's not really actionable info just yet. You've still got... Cypher utility on the site to deal with and a bunch of corners uncleared. Uh, this is really just poking out of a sand to see if someone's going to bite and if they can catch a stray bullet into the head, but it's not happening just yet. 35 seconds, you know, this strategy, it, you can't really keep deploying it all the way down till that till zero. You got to go in eventually. And that's when the trouble starts to brew. Showstopper comes in to play and an easy closeout for Mech so far. Players diving out one at a time. Ults to separate them, utility to execute on. They were not in trouble at any moment during that push.
Yeah, solid hold. And I, I do think that so far, when you've looked at the defensive side, this B site has been a lot stronger for Mech, especially, as I said, with that Defo Nats combo. It's the other side where I'd actually like to see us send pressure a little more. Now, we are in kind of a weird situation with this map because I feel like in most cases, when you go into a map, like, for example, Split, you go, okay, if they do well on the attacking side, that's great because most teams will do better on the defense, just commonly. This map, Mech, I would say better on the defensive side, Ascend better on the attack. So this first half, as it was sort of alluded to on the desk, might actually play a lot more of a role than you expect. I feel like Red has got nearly all of his kills from just random smoke spam. Hmm. You could be right. You could be random right. Random in quote marks, because obviously he knows where he's aiming, yeah. but he doesn't. He's <laughs> just guessing when they're there. Now, I've got big respect for the Guardian plays around... Uh around lamps the sprays through the teleport obviously can be massive and uh, same way through that wall when you're rocking with a cypher the flexibility too if, if that cams over towards a if the traps are there x can off it so far it has been pretty like well b-sided but not one-dimensional right the utility on cypher is constantly swapping up and sure look at the b hold it's the same as what we've seen before like we've had this exact same hold from them before uh, with the camera inside of Hookah, the player to flash and exec off it. But yeah. so far, it hasn't found the value. Like I said, haven't spotted it. They haven't really lost anyone to it. So just keep rocking think, that. And I think it's going to come up for Cena, big value later. Cena died to it once. Like, yeah, that was, that, one but I don't, I don't necessarily, I don't think he may have even known that the cam was there. Yeah, I don't I think, think it was, they've they, seen they the used setup. it for information. They haven't popped it within uh, a distance. They also had another setup on the other side of the map, which involved a deep cam in towards the showers as well. Which again, it's, it's the exactly the same setup every single time. It is just allowing Defo to basically flash into someone who has no idea he's there. And it, it's working so far. I will say this round though, I'm, it, it was a little bit more disjointed. Like I didn't enjoy this one from Ascend. Like, okay, you lose the first player initially, but then every other kill was almost 1v1s. You're, you're just handing a battle, like you saw Vax swing out of showers and just hope to take a fight. That's not a round that you're likely to win. Also, I don't know if this is new. Is, is the timeout thing new? I don't remember that being there before, and I really like it. It's definitely new. Yeah, it, it wasn't there before. And it, uh, I, too, am a huge fan. Yeah, it's, it's nice to see that timeout called in here. Uh, it's Ascend who have called it. There we go. And I mean, it, it's, it's no real surprise, but a tough round ahead of them. Last time that we saw this, obviously, they had the four ultimates that are now offline, and that certainly makes a big difference when you're coming into a shaky buy. Still going to see a, a rifle in play, the Vandal for Vac, by the looks of it. Can't really afford another. Like, it's, it's going to be such a shaky buy. Okay, so we got another setup. I did. This is the thing whenever I watch Nats. I'm sure there'll be people like, oh, he sounds a little bit biased. I just genuinely enjoy watching Nats' setups. This, though, from Starzo, hyper-aggressive flash is not great, but I guess it technically got him out of there. Like, if you blind your teammate, maybe you blinded the other team as well. Seekers, I believed, also was just popped very, very early on. So uh, considering there's still 1 minute 20 left on the clock, uh, maybe that's a little bit overzealous. Yeah, I agree with that. I think Seekers was a big panic. The rotation to the A side is so that you have this uh, from the Cypher, much more passive play based on the fact that Mech know they're up against the low buy. They want to take some control over mid, some information early over on B, push out of Hookah, flash out, make that noise. They're seeing players there. They're feeling the push. They fall back. I don't know if they just expected it to be an all out blitz from them with the pistols or something like that. But yeah. with the information that they got, they kept the three stacked there. Info's decayed now, right? Like, it's been a long time. They rotate over. Oh. Now they're stacked up on the right side. Surprisingly, Hunter's Fury comes out. Lands nothing. Doesn't even delay them, really. I mean, it's a lot committed out of mech already for basically no results. Nats is the one to step up. Only one kill under his belt. Trades out immediately, but mech get there in the end. They get it done. Uh, yeah. Strange round along the way. Certainly not clean. I think up until the fight started, uh, Ascend were doing a lot better than I expected in terms of the ults they managed to burn out. I also just think the timing. Like, so, for example, you know that Nats has a, a setup which has a trap on the site which is going to catch the person who's planting. Mm -hmm. 
Hunter's Fury then, that's an insta-kill. Like, that person can't go anywhere. But there's also no real way for Nat without just wide swinging to actually kill that player off. So I feel like you almost had some guaranteed free kills and instead you went for the gamble. I guess it kind of makes the team a little bit more disjointed and forces them yeah. into the angles that ultimately Nats want. So there is still value held. But yeah, two alts burn out for ultimately not really doing too much. But I don't think Mech are going to mind too much. 6-3 up on their opponent's map choice. Going into Breeze as well. Bear in mind, Breeze has been the one map that has still looked incredible for them. Like, whether whether yeah. you've sort of been disappointed by this team or not, that's the one map where you go, okay, that's old mech. I do think as well, you know, for, for Shados, I wonder where uh, he, that Hunter's Fury gets used. It pushes them forward so they don't maybe have the time to clear out those uh, those traps. Maybe they run into them a little bit more True. carelessly with the time as well. They're like, let's just get in there. Let's get it done. I, I, I don't know if that, that's the intention, if it was to delay them and allow for more rotations to come in. Either way, uh, the round ends up in max favor, a little bit less, uh, you know, some fewer tools than we wanted to see maybe coming into this, but Sand sneaking over with that same wall orb. Haven't had value from it before. Haven't really had the success, I think. A nice paranoia going to catch Chronicle completely. He's behind the box, but Starzo still catches him. And Stars has been fantastic at those kind of duels. I almost believed he was going to take that across the line right away. Although Rhaegar survives, he's still got players everywhere. He's surrounded, taking damage through the walls even at this point. He still gets another though. He's taken out Monster. Okay, the reposition might have been a little bit audacious, but he's given his team a chance here. Flash through, it's going to be followed up by Nat, but Vac is holding his ground. A couple more players, he's even pulling out the classic, trying to get a gun, and once more, it's left on to Defo. We've seen him in a clutch situation like this before, but this time, the crossfire is far better from Ascend. Fourth round on the board, again, an ultimate or two committed, but ultimately a pretty damn good execute from them. I, all things considered, that was fantastic. And a much needed round as well. Their economy was on the rocks. Losing out on that round put, would put them in a really bad spot. But coming in now, two behind, can easily fight to equalize this at the half. Now, the problem being, Mech have got a, a wealth of credits. They've got so much they can invest in this round and easily come into the next doing the same. So for Ascent, it's going to be a little bit of a grind out on this one. Showstopper to start. You got Zeke with the From the Shadows. Woo! <laughs> Huge round already secured. Ah, oh, but Redgar can Get counter it, Tom. He's got zone. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, the flashes. flashes. Hey, we're playing anti-flash, baiting for the run-up, and then TPing out. Oh, That's so care. smart. Oh, they predicted it. Well done by Vac. Just making sure he's not going to be able to get in anywhere. We're not going to see much out of the first show. Stop a second oh. one, though, and there's Shados. A multi-frag to bring them back into the round. Vac, though, has done very well so far. A chance to isolate the duel, but more importantly, a chance to just run all the way back onto the A site. And there is no fast rotation here for the other side. It's kind of funny because uh, <laughs> right there at the end. So first of all, I think Redguard just faked the TP with uh, with his own little teleport. I don't think it was heard, though. Oh, I was on back. I back and didn't hear it. So that's unlucky. But uh, the From the Shadows ended up saving his life. Oh. Ugh, Zeke's life. Now Vac left in the 1v1 up against Redgar. Flash out. Not gonna catch him with that. He knows he's a little late. He's heard the steps and the swing <laughs> is so damn perfect. Five kills in this round and ascend push on one away now. But yeah, I, I think of all the players that we've seen within this roster so far, Vac has been the one that almost seems to be or was further away from what I'd seen from him before. Like just because he's been put into that more supportive role and not necessarily that flashy star, but definitely still showing that he's got it in his back pocket and able to ace that round and that's the thing a lot of that came down to trading but also just being able to take some of those positions back the isolation of jewels was perfect the counter flashes as well and i, I as we've sort of mentioned already i think that was a round that you're looking at the side of ascend and saying they kind of needed that one they, they've shown time and time again that they perform better on the attacking side now a lot of the time that is because they start on the attacking side but that's beside the point especially with this new composition versus g2 eight rounds versus fpx eight rounds the best they can get is six, but even getting closer to that is important. Back with the timeout. This could be like 6.8K on Redgar. I haven't seen the, the operator necessarily come through, but when you look at the roster that Mac are fielding in terms of agents, it's not too much of a surprise. I don't think they're going to get quite the same comfort, though, when they go over to the attack side. 
I think Ascend are going to have a, a field day, really, with CNED. And the way he's been using some of these teleports, baiting out the flash play on B-Long, it's fantastic. Like I said, Zeke ended up from the shadows. Uh, he used that to get away from Chronicle. Got shot in the head by Shados, but he used it to get away from Chronicle <laughs> and the showstopper, so that was good. <laughs> Well, for the final round of the half, both teams with a pretty decent buy, but ultimates, there's only one. All right, you've got yourself the Viper's Pit. Shados, in theory, might be able to get towards the Hunter's Fury, but not been the most impactful ult so far. Now, this is one of those setups we've not really seen, and I'm intrigued to see how it works, because as I said, every other one that we've had from Nats involves a cam and then a pot flash. This one almost just seems purely for information purposes. And he hasn't actually activated the cam yet. He might be about to see their entire squad. It just depends when he chooses to use it. Well, here we go. It's time for them to start making their way through. The trap's already being destroyed. Nats is here spraying away, taking down one, reloads off as well. Even got a drone coming up to cover his right side from his teammate. No, in fact, they're fighting together and they need to. Shados not able to land the shot. Chronicle steps up, but he can't get it done. Not on for the triple. Defo's got to now come back in in the 1v1. The spike retrieved. Zeke on his way to B. He's made it out of here. 30 seconds left. Shadows. Smoke down. Thing is, cover. With the position that was there for Defo, he's actually there a little bit quicker than he might expect. Two flashes online as well. He can almost just burst. Oh, he just could have run through, though. <laughs> Zeke maybe expecting a little bit more of a sound cue. But the timing from Defo was sublime. And while Mech. I, uh, safe to say, I think they deserve this first half. It was really smart of Zeke to get up close. I think he, he maybe thinks he has a second or two longer. And yeah. also, you're expecting the flash to come out. Like, nine times out of ten, in that situation, a sky is going to flash out of the smoke. Pop it up high, try to blind you, and at a minimum, get the info. You're not in hookah, you're not wherever. Like, that is the play. And Defo almost plays into that. <laughs> he just takes the expectation and subverts it completely blitzing out of the smoke like an absolute madman and well he caught him by surprise sometimes the confidence play is the one to go with seven to five at the half the lead for mech is pretty solid and we'll see though as we come on in as i said cnet for me is just such a scary player when you think about him being able to set up on this chamber tp out and they've already had some ideas mm. and i know there's going to be plenty more this time around shorty already in his hands I, I think the other thing as well is this is where I think we could see some of the dangers of the composition from Mac because I think defensively there was never any doubt that Nats was going to do a good job like switching over to this agent. I, sure. I think that they had some cool setups which involved Defo as well being able to sort of pop flash to take space. Fantastic. Now how does this work when you go on to that attack because firstly Chronicle needs to continue to just do damage, like basically take that space and be more of the entry which Defo used to be and, and was good at. Like, I think that's one of the other things where we've been very critical of this roster. Defo was still finding opening kills in the majority of their matches. They just didn't convert a lot of those rounds. The other thing as well is you've lost your second controller. You've lost the player that was basically going to give you those angles to sneak your way in through onto the A site. Probably one of the most common screens you'll see in every single game of Bind whenever there's a Viper in play. So now I want to see what Mech have decided to alter that. Now, of course, Nats can throw his cages over the top and try and make a similar scenario. He's very good at lurking through that. But I do feel like it's a very different game plan to what they were playing previously. Maybe it's something they saved to try and face off against the top teams in playoffs, which I would say, considering their position, was a pretty bold thing to save. But I have to see that. I have to see what they're doing first because I, I have a lot more faith in Ascend's defense, even though we haven't had to see much of it, j rather than the potential of mech attack, which I have no idea about. Well, Tom, I got a little bit of a technical pause. I think you will have noticed, and for the viewers at home, I can let you know that there was a little, little bit of a PC crash over on Ascend's side. Someone tabbing out at the halftime to change their music or something. Who knows? Uh, as a coach, MBS. Oh, changing the, you? changing the track, wasn't he? <laughs> Getting himself hyped up for halftime. And, and now no, he, needs, it he, he was sat there and he was going, I know what the problem is. The reason we're losing is because my shirt isn't quite flowery enough today. So he kicked mm. out his cable, walked off, and now he has a shirt with even more flowers on it. And uh, yeah, now they're going to win. I think he's, uh, you know. I've seen MBS. He, he can rock a flowery shirt. He he's can. a big he's a big fan of the Osmosis ones, though. He really likes those. And I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan. He pulls them off. 
MBS shirt analysis. I'm sure this is what everybody tuned in for. Hey, listen, it's a, it's a technical pause. we got to do a deep dive into the player whose PC crashed so we can mm. sort of figure out where they're at mentally. But uh, I'm figuring out that he's back on the server, and that's because nice. the timer is ticking away again. Looks like technical pause has subsided. And Ascend will be getting tested on this defensive side shortly. Now, CNET having a shorty in his hands because he's got a headhunter in his back pocket. Yeah. Four shots to play with, headshots any range, and he can get nice up close and personal inside of Lamps where he's got a TP to fall back to heaven for range. And then, of course, his trap. And the thing I love about this trap, Tom, it's not actually in Bath. It's on the back of no. Triple. So this is actually, he is solo this holding is a the site right now, but yeah. also not like, if it's a, a, a path, one guy can walk up and break it. No one's going to be solo walking out to there and breaking it to fake, you know what I mean? Yeah, and it, what this allows is basically the rest of the team have completely stacked up on this other side of the map. This looks like a hard read out from Ascend of where Mech are wanting to play their pistol. Already the paranoia through, but it hasn't connected onto Redgar. He'll take one for free, and the counter flash means nothing more comes of it. Nade out as well, but Monster from the top rope comes flying down to take out Chronicle. Now they go pushing back into the danger, man. CNED with his shorty. He hasn't been spotted. He hasn't been checked yet, but surely the spidey senses are tingling right now. You're realizing there's some nastiness at play. Here comes the shorty, and nothing is found. 8 HP left on Defo. Oh, now, unfortunately, he's the only guy that can heal people, so he can't heal himself. Oh, big flash in. They're going aggressive. They're taking the fight right to them. The boom bots come in to save the day, though. Stars are able to take one. Low oh. HP, reload on, and Shados falls. And now, all that's left is Defo and 8 HP. The man from earlier, he survived the shorty blast to the chest. And now... Oh, he's screwed. Oh, I don't think he's going to be getting away with much more. He is being guarded. That defuse is already through. And well, he's been nice. He has been. Starzo, it's gotten a knife kill. This is... What is this game? So the first... Uh, so the first round they got in the first half, and the first round they got in the Each second pistol. half was... No, because I think it they was the third Starzo, round. Right? It was the third round. But so both times that they have won a round, like the first round they've won, has been him finishing it with a knife kill. Which is, I don't know if that's a stat that will ever be recreated. <laughs> Absolutely it's ridiculous. ridiculous. Just to run in there with your knife out. <laughs> he's 8 HP, I guess. You know he's low. The temptation's too much. Surprised he didn't think he was coming up against a shorty. Maybe he did. Just didn't give a damn. I don't know. Either way, it's worked out for the round. And possibly the equalization here. Ascend. Looks set to take seven. Chronicle, though, putting up a good fight. Vac is able to deal with the player on long. Retakes the space, but the flash was good. Oh. I like the idea from Vac, but Defo had the contingency. And now they've got a little bit more control. A little bit more damage done. And they're going back to long, though, Tom. They want the heal. Defo's going to be able to bring Chronicle and Shados right back up. Reset into this fight. And another oh, no. kill goes their way. Starzo's 50 HP, and he's being swarmed. The blast pack keeps them back for just a moment. And Mech, they haven't got the plant down, and they can't get it safely. Defo on the site, practically stuck. He wants to heal on range, and another kill is found. They just wait for Ascend to make the mistakes. Now it's left on to CNED. A few tagged players, that's for sure. And he's almost got the healthy one. Chronicle coming out with a 3k from the pistol. A round that definitely shouldn't have gone in their direction. Now they've reaped the rewards of picking up those Spectres extending their lead and well on the other side of things the purchase is not going to be good if anything i mean what a devastating round to lose considering what they come up against there it just should never end up in that position and a lot of those fights are close the numbers advantage that met cav brings them through them but even still they end up losing a player and then taking like 80 damage each in these trades but the heal is there and it's brought back into the round twice you get players being healed up chronicle and shade and then later just shade i believe ascend lost cned right away he's got his orb whether he likes it or not and we're gonna go into the late round with this end stalling it out not moving and i guess as expected though right this is the kind of play that they should be making just hoping that mech push into one of these angles where they can exploit them yeah th this round genuinely just looks like ascend doing whatever they can to 
get orbs. Like, Starzo's already managed to retrieve one. He'll die and get his showstopper. CNET did exactly the same thing. Two orbs for the round. And now everyone else is just playing close angles, hoping they can get a kill or two. Like, that's all it is. It's all about damage. Winning it seems unlikely, spike but he, that's the spike a. down. Now, I'm sure there's plenty of time on the clock, so it shouldn't be too much of an issue. But again, it allows some of those players to ring position back in towards the site. You've got one holding on into the teleporter as well, just in case. And it's just whiff after whiff. These classics are managing to take the round home. Nice shot from Chronicle, at least. We'll be able to isolate and retrieve the spike. But again, there's a chance for them to move back around. Low HP. In fact, just six remaining for Shados. And he has no idea. Starzo even still has his nade. If he goes for a plant, this kill is free. Oh, this is perfect. Where does he bring the drone, though? Clearing that box. Oh, he hasn't gotten all the way around. Ten seconds left. He seems to suspect it, though. He was on his way to clear it with the drone. He's looking at mid. Sooner or later, he has to plant. Going for spawn, it's the save for the angles, and it's the correct one. Nate coming through, though. He's low. He swings, and Starzo catches. Oh, the round goes to ascend in the end. The showstopper for the next as well. That's a huge win for ascend. After the way they fumble that second round, in this half, they, they definitely won. To get back into this half as quickly as possible. I have, I have no, I, just, I have absolutely no idea how they won that. Like, I, I think a lot of it comes down to Monster. Like, just being able to consistently reposition from where he was with the Classic. He drops the spike from behind, but then they also just delay a ridiculous amount of time from that point. Like, normally if a round like this slips, you're looking at a team trying to execute with like 20 seconds left. They walked into that site with 45 seconds, and he drops the spike and probably wastes about 15 seconds on his own. Like, it, it, it's silly, and it's something that Mech... Oh, you got to be absolutely kicking yourself for, because now you've got a Viper's Pit and a Showstopper to play off against and not even a proper full bar. It's again, those weaknesses that we've called out on Mech this season. We've seen the drop-off. We've seen these uh, the synergy not quite be on the same level as it has been in, in previous seasons. But they've still got that firepower, and it's carrying them through some of these fights. The lead... Oh, I, I, oh, all right, that's ambitious uh... out of Redgar. Um, see, I, I wanted I want to say there's some sort of miscommunication, like there should have been a flash, but there was there was no one in position, well, defo, that could have actually given him a flash. Well, he flashed elbow. Did see the thing is he flashed elbow, but I'm just going over my head like they had Hookah? Well, they, 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 did no, they assume someone was they hiding took it after. like they took Hookah. They thought maybe after someone was hiding in Hookah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know what happened there. It's a big gamble. Nobody was sight, basically. And there was somebody sight, so they paid for that. Man down. Traded. Good start. Zeke goes down, though. Okay. And the showstopper's going to be used. They respect it and fall back. They get the space. <laughs> I've got your trade. 30 seconds left. <laughs> oh, Nats just got stuck on the way out. And while it somehow turned into a two versus two, trap destroyed. And the plant looking likely. A rotation already in from Cena, though. He might be able to try and catch someone if they peek, but maybe a little bit wary of his position. He's trying to escape back to a more passive spot. But the swing out Shados maybe expects to be watched, but he will eventually get the kill. Trade not even going to come through either as Shados comes out with a double. These rounds have been peculiar, been weird in the second half, but Mech, I guess technically, have managed to bring it back again. That they have, Tom. That they have. The days have been weird. Yeah, I feel like we see a lot of these games where it's back and forth, round to round. I think it just speaks to, sure, there are some cracks there, for sure. There's some moments where the polish isn't visible, but then you see these moments where it just absolutely is, where they just they just fly away with it, Tom. They take it to outer space, and it's it's been, it's been gorgeous. Now Mech have the chance to double down on this, to push it even further with what they bring into this round. Better weapons, even a bit of a safety net in terms of the showstopper, and they're gonna, gonna call a timeout to make sure that they can chain together a second round. <laughs> Which, I mean, look, there are still some dangers. 5.8K on Starzo. Where's that going? Yeah, and, and you've also got CNED's Tour de Force, Tour de Force. As, as like a guaranteed issue. And like, on the attacking side, it's one thing. On defense, they can go back to the same sort of setup they had where he's almost just a solo anchor and they can gamble elsewhere. So, uh, yeah, there's always going to be dangers when that's about. He definitely hasn't had the best of games so far, which, again, there's a lot more depth in this Ascend roster that you don't necessarily just need CNED to pop off. 
But in this sort of game where you're having like solid performances from nigh on everybody on the opposing side, like Chronicle currently 17 and 12, looking fantastic and probably one of the reasons that they're currently competing within this game, because as I said, there's been a lot of peculiar moments. Nonetheless, it's going to be a, a couple of judges and that tour de force. You're on big commitment. Whole bunch of utility used that mech. I feel like this is a show stop around. Yeah, if you're committing that much to taking over control, even what? I gotta say, Chronicle. Uh, I wasn't a fan of his uh, of his orbital strikes. Showstopper didn't really do much for them there, but he's coming in with the rifle to try and pull this across the line. Ooh, <laughs> Edgar oh, oh, oh. going absolutely ham. And Starzo left alone. He's he's been here from the start. Sat with a judge in hand, Fire waiting planted. for someone to come into Lambs, but Tom, nobody has. They're just leaving him alone at this point. <laughs> oh dear. Well, the only position left to clear. Chronicle also coming around from behind, and while this is a battle you're never going to win with the judge, it will be a tenth on the board for Mech. Right, especially on a map that has been formidable in the past for Ascend, they're looking fantastic. I also want to say, like, Mitch, you know when you play like racing games and you have that like turbo button, which basically mm -hmm. you have to wait for it to build up over time. I feel like that's Redgar with his aim. And just every every few rounds, or like maybe even every five rounds, or even just once a game, he'll press that turbo button, and just whatever he does in that round is straight BS. <laughs> and that was this round because that was just like running into the site. They sort of evenly traded, and then he just went, "All right, lads." I'm going to kill everyone and we're going to move on with the next round. Okay. Yep, sometimes you got to just uh, fast forward. That's what Redgar was up to. TP out, taking Trailblazer, but they're going to go for the space, re peek into the operator, swing on in. Good day trade at least. <laughs> Cancellation of the old tier out of scene, Ed. Going to maintain the control, keep that operator in play for the ranged fights. Oh, no. Ah, uh, Nats has snuck through. Oh, they've spotted him. He can't quite thread the needle. And he's able to get a second. Cena knew where he was. He swung into him. The tour de force in hand, but that is not enough to deal with Nats. Oh, man. He has walked into the B side and just made it his own. A high impact kills as ever. Not sat anywhere near the top of the server, but just how much this man is able to do it. He's just going to swing. He's had enough of this round already. It was Redgar last round. It's Nats in this one. And I, I won't lie, I panicked in that first kill. I was like, okay, he, he might even die here just to, trying to get a little bit too greedy. But the fact he comes out with three kills here, manages to close out onto Cena as well. And that's the thing, like, those are moments where I would almost gamble everything on the fact that Cena is going to get a kill there. He's He's been very quiet this game. And that that is odd. That's really odd. Maybe this timeout can help to reset it. I have to agree with you. I think we can see a number of games where CNET's bringing the value to the table without putting up numbers. You know, we don't always need to see him up there at the top, but this time around, a chamber on, on a map like Bind and looking at some of the fights he's been in, I agree. I, I think this is a this is not the form CNET that we're hoping to see. That we need to see. Yeah. If a Sander were to have a chance right now. Because, look, coming in today, I didn't have that much faith in Mech because they've been up and down. I didn't know what Mech was going to show up. And the criticism we've had is that, you know what? Every game, Nats is there. Nats is pulling the weight. He's, he's like the lead reindeer on Santa Slay. And the rest, they haven't been, they haven't been hooked up. You now they, they, They've been left behind. He's pulling it on his own sometimes. But this time, he's bottom of the scoreboard, Tom. Yeah. I don't think we've seen this Mech all season. No, and, and and sometimes that is the best iteration of mech. It's just you, you have so many superstars that, well, if you ever get all of them popping, the game's over. That, that doesn't matter who you are. Like we've even seen that versus the the most recent Masters winners. They faced off against God tier mech, and that's why they're the Masters three champions. It's because they just obliterated anybody in their path. I also think there's a, a very strong argument that when they get to land, they're even better. But getting there didn't work out in the last split. Now. They're desperately trying to recover after what was a, a poor season. And while in this map, I, I think they've given a lot of people hope. Hey, if this was Max pick, I'd say, well, they've spent the last week working on this. You know, I don't know what they've got up next, though. 
But this isn't Max pick. This is where Ascend wanted to fight. This is a map that we know Ascend to be incredibly good on. That just last week we said maybe they were looking like they're returning to form to the bind Ascend of, of before. And now, well, Mac are close to closing this out. I love the setup from back, but he's going to be caught anyways. Defo in with another before he shut down. Spike down a. Still, these pistols ever deadly. They know exactly where Starzo is, and that's going to take the time to isolate and the remaining players rotating in the second Zeke peaks. His head is gone. See that now left. One versus three. It would be one hell of a time for the god amongst men to show up. But as said, today has not been his day thus far. It knows roughly where Shadows is. And whoa, so did the last guy. The, the last guy might have had an idea. The same result. Match point. Always seems to be the way. 12 to 7 we go. Mech on a Sens map pick have come in swinging. Their defense was good. They lost the pistol round to start out the second half. And despite that pistol, and then a thrifty win in round three, Sand have got nothing done. And now these rounds are starting to look fantastic for Mech. And we're seeing, look, as I've said, Sand have got a more explosive ult econ, but it's not online right now. And they need it. It's 12 to 7, one round needed, five in a row for Ascend. They've got some Seekers to work with to start this one out. That's about all, and Chronicle is going to be dropped right away. There's CNED stepping it up. Well, it's a start, but there's still plenty more to go. Seekers already going to give them that extra little bit of information, so they'll have the knowledge of where they're going, or at least they think so. The TP's been utilized, but mainly just to spread this back out into more of a default. Nats, while... Well, We've seen him in this spot many times before. This time, though, not on the Viper, so it might be a little bit more difficult. Yeah, I don't know what his plan is to get across. What Redgar is making some crazy TP plays. <laughs> I mean, this guy, not quite as bad as his B site TP on the on top of the pillar, but it ain't it. Mac is no, gonna try I find something else. There's almost a part of me that thinks he should just unbind that ability and just stop using it because there hasn't been any success with it so far. Nonetheless, 25 seconds, three versus five, three players on the site, one locking them in. This should be an impossibility for the remaining players of Mech somehow, though again, just Nats explodes into the round. Three kills in a matter of seconds. I feel like Starzo's almost scared to peek at this point, not wanting to face off against a man in form. Hits the dink for Shados, and they have the time. He's just holding the angle, but Monster just about gets away with it. 11 HP, trying his best to save the game, and he's not going to be able to mech close it like that in mech fashion. That is a convincing performance. Ascends map pick and Mech did not give a damn. Uh, this rematch is already looking juicy, Tom, and delivering exactly as we had hoped. Break is up next. And what are we expecting out of Ascend? Do you think this is a map that they can they can bounce back on? Uh, I think they have to know it was coming. So I hope that they put in some hard preparation because there are not many teams in the world that can beat Mech on Breeze. And that's what they have to do to stop themselves going into the lower bracket. Yeah, it's going to be a really tough battle for them. That's coming up in just a couple of minutes. Before that, though, we're going to have our analyst desk coming up right after this break. Welcome back, friends. And yes, it did happen. Mech taking map number one under Ascend's noses. What a match. Ooh, I, I don't think I expected that. Not on Bind. I think maybe there could have been arguments made for the series. But I think on Bind specifically, this could be done in two, knowing with the map coming up next. I think it was smart from, like, because we said it before, like the last time they played in the Champions Final, this was a map that Mech were terrified yeah. of Ascend on because Ascend was so unbeatable on it. Now that they go there, they go and win it. Pretty comfortably, I think. Like they did, I think Tom said, like they deserved the first half seven five, which I'd argue with as well. I think they were the better team. A little bit sloppy at the start of the second mm. half. Couple of pistols and ecos lost, but ultimately we wanted to see and recapture that mech magic from before. We saw not everything out on show, but glimpses of it, and I guess most importantly, confidence from this mech team. And 
a new composition that I kind of liked. I'm not going to lie to you. Did I think it was going to work on attack? No. <laughs> I don't think anyone did. I think we were missing a certain, you know, wall that's green, etc. But I think overall, if you're looking at the opera of rather the uh, agents on your screen, you can see, and I know, Ryan, you're probably looking at Vac's name there. I criticized him heavily in the first half. Why? He didn't, well, he almost didn't flash anything. Yeah. There were multiple times he, there could have been a really good attacking half from the side of Sen that was lacking purely out of, you know, sort of a bit utility usage there, but mech, I mean, they did pretty damn good with theirs. Yeah, I also just think that it was a case of, like, Red Guard made me like, not only did these knife kills come in, but, like, the plays that Red Guard was going with with the Why TP. was he doing that? He still had first five first kills. Mm -hmm. Like, he had the most first kills in the server, so he was finding these openings overall, but it was just out there, and I guess that's kind of what you want to see. I think the switch over to put Chronicle onto something more aggressive kind of allowed Defo to think a bit more. His decision-making, the way that he was playing the sky was really strong, and he was alive Super for a strong. lot of clutch situations as well. I think that this mech team sort of went into this sort of feeling like they did, like the way that they're executing onto sites, the spacing. This felt like a, a Copenhagen-level team for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, we're throwing that out there. I like that. I like that. They need to win two games, and they're already one map up in this one. Okay. You know, baby steps, baby, baby steps. steps exactly. I, I will accept this as a very good baby step. In fact, maybe the first baby step you'll ever see, you know, the one you get in the camera. As they're order. walking. Yeah, exactly. Through, That's hey, the mommy's very proud of you. I will put that out there because they've been able to come out and accept that maybe Chronicle is the one that could be the tip of the spear, the spear now. Do I think on Ray specifically? No. But I think... Overall, his movement, his gun skill, it is something that is very possibly able to maybe shake hands with Defo and go, thank yeah. you for that, let's trade. And actually, let's just put up on the screen exactly what Chronicle was doing, because he's our player highlight for this game specifically. 264 ACS, 1.6 KD, but this man is more than just pure numbers, Ryan. It's the fact that he's been able to be so strong across multiple different agents. Yeah. It kind of felt like a team where you had Defo being your, your typical entry player overall, that you just stick mm -hmm. him on that. Chronicle, he can play the Killjoy, he can play the Brimstone. But now that they're sort of trying to find something to find an opening and a way to snowball, putting your best player on a duelist when Defo's looked yes. a little more off makes a lot of sense, but it's not something I expect to see on every map. No, no. And just to point out there for everyone, Ray's has not been played by Chronicle. At least I go back 90 days. So that's a, a new agent. Yeah. It's been a damn long time and he did okay. Dr. Ryan, you're being called over yeah. to the Ryan's around. So I think we look at bind nowadays as like you need to have a viper otherwise you throw in i think fpx brought some interest to the table with a cypher didn't quite work last week but we do get to see what ultimately makes this composition strong and why it's just so suited to nuts we'll start off with like a basic straightforward round to get a start this is just a typical sort of setup that you'd have camera up to be able to watch anybody that's going to actually cross through on the attacking side and really the camera's just there to sort of let the person peek as soon as nuts gets that information the flash combo is going to come in and Defo can set himself up nicely to get a kill. Now, this is straightforward stuff. This one I really like on the defense because it was somewhat similar. Again, you could sort of see where the camera is, what information it's getting, but as soon as the camera gets that information, it's actually able to set up a real nice play with Redgar. He has the paranoia ready to go, but look at how well they're lined up in time. So you're going to see the paranoia actually coming through just to get anybody that's playing from short, but also the Hunter's Fury is going to come down right behind it. So if we sort of play this through you can see it all come together everybody gets flashed the hunter's fury is going to come through doesn't quite get the kills but you can sort of see where nats is moving he's now onto the site he's scaling forward trying to be in a more aggressive position to play in on the attacking side it was a bit of a slow start we saw mitch and tom mention that he was bottom fragging for a while and i think one of the reasons is because of these kind of play styles this is an execute that's coming in from mech it kind of goes wrong very quickly two deaths very early on but i really wanted to highlight how shados really enables and nats to get into this position. So this is straightforward stuff. Again, it's a heavy B execute coming in from Mech up until it sort of falls into a bad position. But Nats has actually managed to sneak his way into this little cubby that we all know and love from playing ranked. But what I like about this is this shock dart that comes in, it's purposefully placed to stop CNED from peeking further to the left hand side. So he actually sees where Nats is. So this shock dart is all there to basically go, you can't peek anymore to the left to see where Nats is playing from. 
And with this one way, it really allows Nats that little bit of an opening to actually sneak in onto the site. Clearly, as Zen don't expect him here, <laughs> this is a bit more of an awkward fight, which I'm going to still let it play in slow motion because whilst I did say that uh, Mecha looking Copenhagen level, there are a lot of like awkward rounds, really. And certainly with the pistols and ecos that they lost uh, in the second half, you go, that doesn't look good. But the fact that they almost bounce back instantly, that's what makes them so scary. There you go. You could never uh, count them out. No. And I love the fact that, at least for the side of Mech, the use of Cypher isn't just, we're going to use Cypher for this particular. How many times did he move the cam? Yeah. Round after round after round. He had a placement for everything, so really well done. Well, that was map one with Mech taking the W. How about we take a look at Breeze? At this point, it's warm, it's sunny everywhere here in the <laughs> NBA, but specifically for this map. What are the shots now? What's the chance for Ascend to come back and take it to map three, Jess? I mean, we heard the cast has already referenced the fact that obviously there's an expectation that Breeze is going to be there. If you don't ban it, of course, Breeze gets to be picked, so you have to be prepared for it. I don't like that discourse purely out of the fact that a lot of teams will, will prepare for their own and then the third and then try a small counter on the second, knowing their map pick of a counter, unless they go hard counter. Do I think they're going hard counter? No, I don't think this is the team that does the hard counter. And that's my problem is that I think they're going to walk in to a very big wake up call. One that they'll just shrug off and go, oh, we'll go next map, we'll go next. Yeah. I don't think they're a huge counter strat heavy team. The thing about this for Mech is they're undefeated this year on this yeah. map. They have a long win streak going yeah. on it too. They've only played it once this stage, mostly because it gets banned out by teams. <laughs> yeah. So the fact that Ascend knew that they were banning Fracture, kind of knew where the map bans were going to go. Yeah. They must have been expecting this breeze. That's the way, like they know that Mech are going to yeah. want to play it. But they, um, Ascend didn't look too bad playing up against FPX last week. Again, you have the Euro that FPX played. Mm. It was awkward, but Monster especially, 280 ACS on the oh. losing side 39. I can't get an ACS that high when I'm winning, <laughs> never mind being on the losing team. So the fact the Monster was putting in that kind of performance gives me hope. It's just whether we see Starkso playing that Neon like we did last week. Well, 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 we're in for our agent select for map two, Breeze. Reminder, Mech can just win it outright here and make this first match a pretty darn quick one yeah. as we set up. Make it a Breeze. There it ah, ah, is. Got got there. There, there we go. Walk us through it. I mean, look, the Starkso duelist role for me has just really lit a light underneath me. Like, I've got a fire underneath me about Starkso and a duelist, and this is the map where he takes Neon, where I'm like, I like it. Not do I like it, I love it. So the fact he's bringing it back, not a surprise. Uh, back not on the, you know, bringing back that sort of... Uh, that, that fade, what do you think? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, Chronicle on Chamber on this map is insane. Like, I think he 2.8 KD up against BBL. He only died seven times, and he has been absurd on this map throughout the year. You know, certainly me and Tom have had conversations about how good Chronicle has looked on this Chamber here. Yeah. But also, like, on the flip side, CNN, he had a poor performance on Chamber in the last map. He didn't really shop that much. And also, this is a map where he's also not really had the same impact when he played up against FPX. So you want to see Chronicle versus CNN live up to that expectation. Think Absolutely. you're going to get that from Chronicle. I want to see it from CNN. Yeah, I mean, look, I think that will have put a, a, a kick up his butt, I think. I really think map number one, he was getting shut down by shots he actually shouldn't have been. That would have been the most, like, highlighting part for me is if I'm CNET and I'm dying to, like, one-tap Vandal when I've got the, you know, two at a force in my hand, that's ridiculous. You shouldn't be dying in those scenarios. So I think for him, I hate throwing out the word unlucky, but there were moments there where, where his opponents were in positions that were just so, just... I don't know. I got to. I sound like a CNED fan. Yeah. Do I? I really do. Hopium. Who is it's not it? the full Hopium. Like, yeah. yeah. It, it's funny because I remember like the Hundred Thieves video where they're like, they, oh, CNED's on the B site. People leave. We're going. We're not going to play. Fair like, enough. He doesn't have that threat anymore, I suppose. So I'm curious to see if he can pull it off here. Well, let's see if he's going to be on site or not. Thanks so much. Then let's toss it to our casters. It's time for Breeze. Enjoy. Thank you so much, guys. Spree's coming up, Tom. I'm, I'm really not sure what to expect. I have to be honest. You know, after seeing that performance out of Mech, I, I feel like they're back, baby. Is it going to change coming into their map pick? Uh, I, I would say that, again, we're always going to have the questions about their attacking side of this map. And mm -hmm. I actually did really like the composition that Ascend were running last time we saw them. It was just that they were up against a Yoru comp and no one knows how to play against right. a Yoru comp. So I, I think there's definitely aspects that still lean this map quite heavily in the the favor of mech but i, I you're watching two world-class teams within our region they're always going to have close games it's always going to be good games and ultimately they can go either way yeah well they most certainly can let's see which way this one's going as we dive into breeze
there we go. Okay. Well, I closed my VMix, but I'm back on, Tom. Ready to go. <laughs> Just like the game is. <laughs> the tax side for next. We kick things off. You know, I'm going to look at Chronicle who tried a light out game last map. Now he's sitting here challenging Keenhead. And sure, Keenhead wasn't really there. He didn't have that threat, like Ryan said, that, that we've seen before. You know, Keenhead's team go away. But on this map, on the chamber, I think things could change. Yeah, one of the things I really want to see a little more impact from is going to be VAC. Uh, I, I wasn't particularly impressed with Fade on this map last time out. I, again, I think that a lot of that was coming up against FPX, but I, it, it's one of those agents where I, I'm still not sure whether I actually enjoy it on this map over something like a Sova. Well, either way, we're going to have a very deep push coming all the way through from the defensive side. It seems like Red Car's aware. He's actually just watching for this instant headshot to Starzo. First one taken down, he's gonna get both. It's the old Red Guard back. The man was holding the spike all the way down the bottom of mid, just waiting in case anybody pushed that angle. And he may have already just closed out the pistol round. Pistols and Ascend just don't really seem to work out as the desk has proven throughout their pre-show. And while it looks like it's gonna be another one to almost ruin their statistics. Nice shot though from Zeke. Maybe that can be a little bit of a difference maker. Still going to end up in a two versus four. Chronicle has found another one. Well, I mentioned Vac wanting to uh, have a little bit more impact. Of course, he is doing his best monster impression right now. I'm sure the pictures are just a little bit muddled up, but that, <laughs> I'm guessing that will get sorted. Nonetheless, you can see the mech are very well set up. And then said, like, a lot of the time when we watch this map, their defense was god tier. Like, literal, the mm -hmm. best defense on this map we've ever seen. Uh, their attack was always a bit shaky. So getting the pistol, oh, that's a good start. Oh, it's exactly what you want. And look at that bulldog already in the hands of Nats. I mean, the weapons can be sold, but I'd love to see it. Uh, and anytime we see these kind of hard upgrades, I'm behind them. And with three kills on the board already, Redgar has a couple extra credits, and those are being invested right now into a Guardian. On a map like this, it makes perfect sense to take these extra ranged weapons into, into the battle. Chronicle has the Headhunter to play with as well, a full eight bullets to work with in this round. So you can already see it's a huge problem for Ascend if they're forced into any ranged fights. They're at a disadvantage in pretty much every fight, but a huge disadvantage in three out of five. So instead they stack up here, play super close range on a main, and they've got this cover from back, but he has to step in and try to stop these players from being able to catch the off angle on his teammates. He does get the backstab. Starzo finds another and the damage already done. They'll look to extend it a little bit more. Remember, they invested into a guardian, into a bulldog, and now those have been dropped. It can be retrieved, of course, but the cost is already massive. An astronomical amount of damage done. I ascend in this one. Defo with the chance to really farm up some orbs, though. Already getting himself three kills. Another one coming in for the plant. If he gets this final kill, he's only going to be one away, and he will. So it, it, it's mm. a horrific round in terms of the damage, but that silver lining... Well, you look at where the orbs are on this map, especially over towards the A site. If he doesn't get a blade storm at the beginning of this round, I'm going to be disappointed. You know, look, with Mech having that safety net, it scares me because Defo's already started to show up. And if he gets into this map, if he gets a good swing into it, like I will say every time I see this team, until the day comes that I see Scrim Defo come out, and play at the LAN, at, well, at the online events, at the LAN events, even more so. I know Defo's capable of so much, and with a Blade Storm in his back pocket, this is a, a scary round. If he manages to get it, he's not even going for an orb, Tom. He's going into the site. He's looking for a kill right here and now. Chronicle's the one to get it, but still, it doesn't matter about a Blade Storm now. They've potentially got a plan to come through. Yeah, Stars almost has to be careful that he's not just giving anything away here. They're being patient though. And I'm liking this almost swarm mentality at the moment from Mech. Just playing off of each other. Nobody really overextending or playing anything too aggressive. Chronicle's gonna be able to get the spike down. They're trying to clear some of these deeper angles. They've managed to take quite a lot of space. And bear in mind, there's an after plant being set up. This should not be space that they're able to garner. The problem is they don't know there's still a second player behind. And oh no, oh, it's not pretty from that. He's not gonna get the job done. Luckily his teammates have stepped up to the plate. The more Mech. 
They're gonna convert their bonus round and well. Uh, you weren't happy with the the how clean the last one was, Mitch. Are you uh, feeling a little better now? Uh, yeah, yeah. This is uh, <laughs> it's certainly gonna wipe the sweat from your brow if you're a mech fan, seeing the the possibilities unfold, and then this is is what comes of it: a complete shutdown. Ooh. Yeah. Well, you know, we didn't we didn't need to see that bit again, but no, uh, we did. you know, we have been singing his praises, so it makes sense. We highlight when a few shots don't go uh, on target. Three to zero, though. Huge start for Mac. He said the pistol was a fantastic thing to see because they'd struggled on their attacks before. Well, there seems to be no struggle yeah. this time around. And as you see Ascend come into this round with Sheriffs and the Headhunter on CNED, there is, again, danger. Just not sure how great that danger is and whether it's going to actually pose any threat to Mech because they seem to be making an easy time of it. <laughs> It's just tearing them a new one. Any piece of aggression that seems to come through is just almost instantly punished. And, and and that's the thing with this composition for Mech, and that's the thing that makes this so difficult for the or no, sorry, for Ascend to play with is it's a composition that revolves around aggression. Like you're you're basically almost using CNED to sort of push and probe and have that ability to teleport out. Starzo playing passive on Neon is I even just saying that out loud sounds ridiculous. You've got your initiators being what I would say is the more aggressive initiator. Like you don't have necessarily like your Sova lineups, for example, to find you that information. So in other words, you basically have to be playing further forward. Well, you're playing into, as we've sort of mentioned, one of the best defensive teams in the world. If they're able to play defense on both sides, that's GG. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and uh, to be honest with you, Tom, already with four rounds on the board, it, it seems hard to believe that this will even end up in a, an okay position for Ascend. I think they've got a bad half on the cards, unless something crazy happens. And that's almost best case scenario. Good shutdown by Monster, though. That's what they need. Some players to be stepping it up, and while well, he's doing exactly that, a second as he manages to shut down the push through double doors, and although he gets traded by the Hunter's Fury, that's the only kill that they've got. Mech have ran straight into a brick wall, and this is the first time we're seeing Ascend actually manage to put a stop to this team. They're even going to shut it down without, with only losing that one player. So yeah, not bad at all. I don't necessarily mind the attempt from Mech there just to pick up the pace. Like, I, it, it does seem... I, this is why, again, if I ever see like someone being over, like very, very critical of someone like Defo, watch a game like this and realize what they are expecting him to do. Like, it's throw smoke, dash into it, and you're the only man on the site. Like, that's... To get out of that with anything at all is always going to be impressive. The thing is, though, they do well to almost deny that disruption. They kill him off quick enough that then the other players aren't able to sort of play off what he caused. And that, that's the most important thing with Mech. If you can shut him down quick enough, which is easier said than done, the game's going to be a lot easier for you. Oh, that... You know, those players still fighting. There's two of them here. They're not worried about one Prowler. One of them can get hit by it, no problem, because the other can trade. But that's when CNED strikes, pulling it back into a sense favor, doubling down on it as Starzo to put Chronicle alone. The tour de force, it rang out at the start of the round, but very little has been heard from it ever since. That Viper's Pit from Monster, you know, it, did, it didn't really do anything for them, but you don't care. You get the round win. That's what it's all about. Locking it down, securing it, and now even spotting Chronicle. Should be no problem. Uh, wow. Okay. Nice one to start. That is an op on the floor. That's something that they should be able to retrieve. But again, it's just about being careful you don't to throw too many weapons away. They managed to win the last one with four players alive, so economy should be absolutely fine. But you have to bear in mind, Mech also have a lot of finances. So Chronicle, he's running around with basically nothing. Yeah, okay, he's retrieved a rifle, but I, I don't think this is going to be too much of a detriment. Left. It would be far more important to them to just try and kill off some of these players. Interestingly as well, if he gets one more kill, he could actually get the spike and plot, which would be kind of madness. Yeah, at that point, he would he would definitely be in a winnable position, so I can understand why everybody's being so cautious, so passive. Left. That timer's going to run out. We'll see the save. Called out for Chronicle. Any extra damage you could get done here as they sneak on through. Ooh, some steps. Hello. Hello. Oh, it's a miss. It's a classic out, and he's not going to get him. Chronicle, in fact, going down at the last second. Wow, that's quite not quite the outcome I think he was hoping for.
No. As sort of mentioned, for their economy, it, it really doesn't matter too much. It, it was more just trying to do as much damage as possible. But the fact that CNED now actually gets to keep his operator, still have the Tour de Force in his back pocket for when he wants to utilize it later to almost save their economy, I said they've done well to stabilize here. And that a lot of these sort of fast-paced blitz plays now haven't worked. I do wonder if we're going to see Mech slow it down a little bit. And the fact they've bought an op, I think, sings true to that. Yeah, they'll take that little bit of early space, but not afraid to play after. Okay, we got a drone coming through. Right away, covering up that space on the A side. They've spotted the door wide open. They know there's players up there now, at least one. Flash out sees nobody. Good idea from Asen now that this push could be coming to the other side of the map. Actually going to have the Nightmare put out towards B main, but this is a full split through mid. Starzo swinging around with the finger guns. Good for a double. And back on the back side. They know he's here. They heard the ultimate moments ago. They saw it where it came from, and they're going to clear him out now. At least they'll try to. The first kill is his. The second is as well. And now the spike on the floor right in front of him. That's the last man alive, and they're clearing him. They're checking him, and they're taking him down. A dominant round from Ascend and a much better face than what we saw starting out this map. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has been down to Vac. I, I, I think he's been doing incredibly well just staying alive at the back of the sites, getting information for the team, but more importantly, just having impact kills. I, I think that's something that, again, I think went a little bit of a miss the last time out when they played. Starzo as well, of course, is always going to be a highlight, but I, I don't know how reliable it's going to be to get two kills with an overdrive. I'd say Starzo seems to get a lot. CNET, I like this aggression. Still got the TP to go back on and burns up a bunch of their utility early for practically no info. CNET was playing aggressive on A early. All right. Couldn't have guessed that one flash through. Here we go, Zeke. He's in the fight and the flash actually makes it so he can see them. He's just close enough and now able to take another is monster. The kills in a sense favor yet again. This was looking like a little bit of a, a shaky one on that fight inside it too, but my god, they doubled down and got the rewards. I, I don't know how he can see anything there, but the, he gets away with two kills, and that's just huge for the squad. And now the fallback once again, the slowdown, but just look at the aggressive positioning. You've got deep tube control ready. You've got deep control over short as well towards that B site, just allowing Starzo to almost peek him from different angles and then you just have the watch over of monster to make sure nobody can make it into this a side the fact is stars all he needs is one kill here and he's got the info he can almost just opt to try and delay unless there's going to be something lurking back through and that's the one interesting thing is that shados i like i wouldn't mind him playing into the a site if there was any way his teammate was getting back in that direction spike planted well, that spike planted, secured. They're not clearing it on the corner! Shados, though, he has to run. He's got a sprint knife out. It's planted for him. At least the wall goes down for now. Just to buy him that little bit of time, get it refreshed. Monster about to pop it back up, but look at the rotation all the way around. Shados is gone, but now Monster's heard him. He hears the steps, the flashes through, it's popping, and he knows that will pull him off the spike. The reload, the steps are close now. The fight's awkward. He was reloading at the start, but that did not stop him. The round goes to Mech in the end. It's a close one, and a lot of these have been. But Mech keep on building those attack rounds, and this is what I was talking about earlier, Tom, where I'm saying, like, it feels like best-case scenario is a bad half for Ascend, because even yeah. though they can have all these clean rounds, every now and then it seems undeniable that, that Mech would pick up one or two more along the way. But the, the thing is as well, and I, I think something that... I, I, we sort of spoke about at the time was in some of the matches where things were going really bad for mech and not only was like the structure in some of the rounds and trading not great but just those multi-frags were missing like I, I think we spoke about it there was a game where shados his only multi-frag was one 2k he's had way more impact than that in just the first map alone and these last few rounds there goes the flash his defo is already taken down the stuns come through heavy commitment Try to deal with these players inside of halls. Chronicle only able for the one before going down. Shados uh, is stuck in a snake bite, but they thought it was clear. They thought they pushed all the players out of tube. Still, though, only the one kill to be found. And as the spike at least goes down, it's outside of this pit. Nats is being cleared. He's going to try to step by, but he got spotted. Very nicely cleared. Well handled. 
I think Ascend did everything right there, Tom. At no point were they taking duels where they couldn't trade, and you saw that a kill for Mech was always immediately responded on by Ascend. Yeah, a very well played out round. And, I, and as you sort of mentioned, they didn't overcommit to anything. I, I think that's one of the things that Ascend can definitely be a, a victim of, or fall victim to sometimes, is just, okay, I've got this kill, I now need to win us the round. It's like, in a lot of cases, that's not really the truth. Still though, like as I mentioned, a lot of teams really struggle facing off against Mech when they go into their defense. Five rounds in most cases has been more than enough. So as you mentioned, I, I think this is already going to be a bad half. The question is how bad? Luckily, in terms of the finances, things are in the absolute bin. And I don't even just mean in terms of the money itself. Like ultimates, there's only one even close and it's Seekers. Seeker's gone out, and they've caught Defo up close at least, as they start to sneak up on them. Defo's gone down, flash over. The other's caught behind the walls. The stuns will keep them way, way back. I think the Seekers did the same to start with. And now they pump the brakes. They've lost Defo. They've gained nothing for their troubles. Now back. Slightly nasty spot. Still looking like a bit of a monster, but you know, I'm sure <laughs> I'm sure that would change eventually. <laughs> and he's actually gonna go down. Maybe a bit of a problem here. Look at the isolation. Monster is now gonna be the only player left within this site to defend. He's done excellent though. Just those snake bites alone are gonna buy time for the rotation to come through, and there is seen it. Gorgeous. Monster able to tap away, taking a double. Obviously, uh, dies there for, for the ult orb. Don't worry about it. But no, all, all things considered, this late in the game as well, this is a, an all right round. It's pretty much what you want to see. Five to five, you're coming into it. Couple ults online. Very impactful ones as well on the side of Ascend. And I don't even think you're going to you're gonna need them necessarily. CNET's playing the op. You could potentially double op either this round or the next if this one goes well. That you'd want to because there'll be mixed bot you know, specters and such that you're up against. But I do want to see Ascend walk out with both of these. And they've got the ultis to do it. They've got the economy to do it. Mech are on the rocks. Lose this. Their economy's weak for a final round. Seven is definitely possible at this point. Oh, I thought Sienna was going to go pushing. Instead, it's actually the Seekers very early popped. This is a much faster pace round once again. And they've already been pinged up. So it's not going to be anywhere near as much of a surprise. And even going to utilize that Tiger to stun up Defo. He does get out of position. And even dodges the flash. I don't know if they'll expect them to be this far forward. They won't. It's a big kill. That's going to force some mistakes because look, Ascend try to make up for that. They try to push up. And as they go through B, they get shot in the back. Shados was waiting inside of the elbow. Now they've got mid control. They've got control towards spawn and holes. They've killed the B push. Now you know that nobody's behind it. And okay, they've lost Redgar on double door. So it's a little bit of a blow to be dealt, but it's Starzo. With a huge impact, B side denied. He's locking it down, but it looks like Mech aren't happy with that outcome. They still want to take it towards his site. They're going to try to send two through the spawn, one through B main. I don't know about this with Starzo still up and there to play with. 30 seconds makes left. sense to try use this Viper Wall post plant, but they've got to root him out first. Oh, getting aggressive works out just to give them the one. But now Kronika can actually dip back in to try and take control of the spawn. In fact, the plant's not really going to be for him at all, but it might give him the opportunity to isolate a jewel and more importantly, catch them as they go crossing back into the site. Because right now, he knows that nobody's coming from that direction, can keep having a little gander in that direction. But ultimately, the longer this goes, the more likely he is going to cause them troubles. Oh, Chronicle down already. Now Nats has to do it from this back corner. Wall still has quite a bit of fuel on it. I think they're going to have to push through it. A little bit of an advantage in that fight. He hasn't checked the right corner, though. So many angles to clear, and Monster gets the right timing, slips through, and wins this round for Ascend. Six on the board. And the possibility for seven. It's there, Tom. It really and truly is. I think That's Mech, you know, they, they got a bunch of kills. Their economy, yeah, it's it's shaky. It can scrape a buy, but it's light shields all around. No ults very easy to get online in this one. We could be looking at a 7-5 half. That said, that's still decent for mech.
You know, I'm I'm looking at their defensive yeah. side with a lot of promise. Yeah, even still, though, I, I think that you have to bear in mind, I feel like Ascend's composition is going to run really nicely going into the attack. So I I don't think by any stretch, if this ends as a 7-5 to Ascend, that this map is done for Mech, because uh, I don't think many teams will have played against such a fast-paced composition. Speaking of fast pace, guess who's in the site again? Right in and right down. Defo taken out. Let's see if they follow up on that space. Monster still able for a double. His holds have been fantastic. Even outnumbered. Able to put up those numbers. Still. Mech are holding on. 2v3. Have to deal with CNET up top. And that's Shados' job. He's been spotted though. And CNET is quick to deal with him. <laughs> that's mini jump scare. <laughs> Spike planted. Oh, CNET's going to close out the half as well. Definitely having a little bit of a resurgence in towards the end, but again, I, I don't think it's necessarily just been on him. I, I think that, like, as you mentioned, Monsters had a fantastic half. I think Vac has done incredibly well. And although I don't necessarily think that like, all of the information play has been perfect, I think the way that he's utilized his ults has been one of the more important things and just even the delaying of their movement into the site. Nonetheless, Mech are not going to be too unhappy with that. And with how poor we've seen a send be in pistol rounds thus far i would even say that there's a pretty high likelihood i think it's like a 70 percent chance they're going to get themselves into a good spot going into the second half you know especially when we think of the early days of ascend uh thinking of you know a to monster swap is is crazy um and we knew there was a lot of promise for someone like monster to be a, a solid player but it was a risk you know you can look at someone and say they perform well at this level, that level, but once you bring them to VCT, it's a completely different ball game. But this new face of Ascend, I'm a big fan of it. And I thought VAC would be my favorite addition because, God, John, we've been begging for a good team for VAC for so long. We got double headhunter trades right off the bat. Oh, that's not easy to do with how fast Starzo was moving, but hey, I don't think they're going to mind too much. With Defo going down on the other side, it also leaves Nats. Somewhat isolated within the site. Now, bear in mind, Shados does have a relatively fast rotation, and they're actually going to go pushing past the snake by. The thing is, he's been tagged up, but Shados is still here, giving them the advantage for now, but Nats is so desperately low. Shados, though, just finding one through the screen, and while they need CNED to clutch out a ridiculous round just to give them a chance to take a pistol away. And somehow it's possible, Tom, I start to believe, until a 20 HP Nats catches that quick shot. A pistol round for Mech at a 7 to 5 half already and starting out their defense. This is a little bit spooky for Ascend to give away that pistol, but eh, look, they have that lead to at least give them that safety net to play with, to fall onto. They can lose the first round. They can lose this one, write it off. CNED maybe, yeah, buy a couple headhunter bullets in this one. Light shields and see what damage he can inflict. And again, depending on these investments, you can see a, a ton of potential value. Mech. There we go. Okay, they are going to come in. Guardian and Bulldog. So kills are very important for Ascend here. If they can manage to stop them saving one of those rifles, that would be fantastic for their economy. It's also quite interesting that one of them is actually an onto Chronicle. Especially with the Headhunter available, you might expect him to go for something a little different, but clearly feeling more confident in his own ability with the Bulldog. Defo, though, same fate as last round. Back-to-back -back, CNED's caught him, and well, that's already one player down. One out of four headhunter bullets used already, and it's found a victim. Like you said, player down means one less player to carry a weapon through to the next round. Now, with it being defo, it's okay losing one player in a round like this. You want your jet to be the one, you know, grabbing that death orb, I guess. All good. It is what it is. Really, you want your, your jet to be the one farming up kills then catching the death orb, but you can't always get it the way you want it. CNED's repositioned. Looking for a B main pick this time around. It is Red Guard that they're challenging, though. So <laughs> Guardian on the other side of it. He's tagging them up, trying to go for wall bangs, but not going to fall for that. Shock darts through, left. has support. Teammates coming on in to help him. Now, both these rifles on the back side, they cannot lose these fights. <laughs> and they will not. He's not getting anything. <laughs> Chronicles just farmed up his tour de force. And that's a terrifying prospect for the next round. Basically, his free operator and well, unfortunately, now the valuable headhunter bullets are all but gone. Chronicle gonna eco-frag, as you mentioned, and well, 
you said that Defo would be the ideal candidate to farm up some orbs. I can think of one other guy that will definitely <laughs> benefit. On a map like Breeze, yeah, I think you're going to be pretty happy with Chronicle. And the thing is, this is now a power-up round in uh, for both teams. Ascend power up because they get the rifles. They get their shields. For the most part, Star Zone back ain't looking too healthy on that front. And you know on Star Zone, no shields on the way through or light shields. But on mech side, they get to have their guardian and their bulldog, which we already mentioned. Now a tour de force to play with as well on Chronicle is having a brilliant game so far. An early aggression oh into A main. God. This is an aggressive push. They're going to use the numbers to their advantage. And the light shielded Star Zone is the one to shut it down. Yeah, he gets dinked up. A little bit lucky to still be alive, but they'll take it. They still haven't been able to clear Shados just yet. He's got to be careful, though, as they manage to pincer back in. And now we look towards that tour de force. Chronicle, last man standing, 1v3. Yeah, the 140 dink connected on the stars, though, about to be healed up, too. He's coming back to 100 health. Zinc making sure of that. The tour de force, though, doesn't care what health you're on. It'll take you one bullet. To drop an enemy but chronicle's got three to take down the right corner not yet cleared he will spot him on the way a little bit too much to ask though eight to seven send pick up this round here but it ain't all plain sailing you know for mech definitely underwhelming considering the weaponry they bought through brought through but that was just to give them a chance at winning that round it hasn't worked out and now they're gonna buy conventionally and come back in for what would be a normal uh, buyback. Uh, still, it's not been the, the prettiest of buys. Like, you're, you're still going to have a Bulldog. Okay, it's on 10 Nats, and I feel like there's only a, a couple of players anywhere near his level with that gun. Even still, though, again, just look at the sheer pace. Starzo. Oh, it's so sick! They have the combo in line with the horn to find that information, and Chronicle's at least going to get the trade, keeping things even with Shados. I love that combination, though. It's what they were attempting to do before. And that, just a tiny gap left in that poison orb is enough to get him a kill. It's all he needs. Ascend now on the back foot as they attempt to creep their way back into middle to pick up that spike. It's going to be Zeke that has to get the backstab around and open up mid. And he will. Oh, God, oh, no one's watching two. it at all. What a huge mistake. Oh. But Redgar turns on a dime to close it. Monster now alone. No idea where Shados has gone, where he could be. Even every angle has its danger, but he doesn't suspect that the spawn is in fact where he's coming from. They're walking right past each other. It looks like he might get the A site completely for free. It might actually work out better though for Mech. Because the fact is they're going to want to try and play this one together and an isolated duel might have been exactly what Monster needed. Still a possibility of it though. Shados is checking the angles. Now the screen is probably going to give away everything they could possibly need. But as of yet, they're still not sure. It's definitely not the B site, and well now that rotation will finally come through. An interesting wall to work with here. Obviously, you're playing up against the sky. Oh, well, that is very unfortunate. I mean, look, it, being spotted, they don't know where he is, even still. The recon going to serve to try and grab that. But these initiators yet to initiate combat. It's going to be on monsters terms that they take this fight as he dances around the pyramids, just trying to delay time and turn the clock into his friend. Now, oh. though, is the time to strike and he'll only oh. get the one. Shade us. Enough time to defuse that one comfortably, I think. And Mech yeah. will equalize. Yeah, a lot of sort of unlucky scenarios there. I think Monster played that incredibly well, the getting the after plant, but also, well, just the quick reactions. I think that whole round is basically quick reactions. I'm almost certain as well that Redgar only gets that kill because Nats is facing in the direction of the player that peaked. And because of that, either he showed up on the map or Nats just before he died went, he's behind you. And so he spun around and killed him. It's just unlucky with the timing of that peak of the direction that Nats was facing in. So an incredibly close round. And actually on the other side of things, the Sen still have enough to buy. You might be looking at Monster with a Spectre, but he's reliant on the fact that if he can get into that Viper's Pit, well, there's a chance, but look at where Mech are. Oh yeah, they are taking the fight right to them. Monster now needs some help. Starzo's the one to come on in and provide it. A nice kill for them.
They shut down the elbow push, but there's more aggression coming through. That's been spotted. And now, well, it's going to be very tough. We're going to red guard to get out of here. They know exactly where he is. They're using snake bites to push him into the open and deal with him, putting Mac on the back foot. Snake bite through, but they're going to bypass it. Viper spit thrown in. Nads oh. with the spam. He catches the other player. A little bit unlucky, but that has actually dropped the spike. That's a lot of information. He's going to go around behind both players millimeters from each other. Can Chronicle catch back on the cross? That's the more important thing. Oh, He's playing around the edge and he will. And the peek out from Monster again gives him a chance. Another clutch scenario in back-to-back -back rounds into the one versus one. And Chronicle's low as well. He might have just played this perfectly. Wrapping back around. The newbie to this team has been fantastic all season. And you're seeing why here. Uh, Monster's got to be one of the best additions to a VCT roster that we've had. I'm not even talking this season. Honestly, I... For a guy that came from, you know, a, a lot of good words were, were going around about him. But that, a lot of the time, that doesn't mean anything at uh, at lower levels. As I said, when you come to the top, it's, it's a different ball game. But Ascend did their job scouting this guy out. They've they've picked up one of my favorite players to watch. And it's yep. a combination. It's not like, I don't think he's necessarily the best player in the world at anything. But he's just bloody fantastic at everything. Yeah. There, there doesn't seem to be any weakness, whether it's aim, decision making, or even just there. the variety of different agents that he can actually play. I've got your very, very good sentinel. Well, now we're going to see the pace change straight in towards the site. Overdrive already activated, so this is just going to be an attempt to try and almost farm up some of these players. Not really with anywhere near the same risk as the rest of his teammates. Bear in mind, the purchase right now on the other side of things is very, very poor. Chronicle will at least shut down Starzo, but he's done his job. Yes, absolutely. Getting the space, getting the plant, making sure there's not a massive danger. I'm sure they would have wanted to deal with these players who have like your blade storm and such online, but well, he's got plenty of teammates to do that. Well, Fewer by the second. <laughs> Defo's already dropped one. Cloud bursts down to fake that he's going all the way through, but he's dancing around and Shados able to at least drop one, gives his teammate a chance, and if nothing else, it was a good attempt, but an ascend round. I, I think, again, something that will just impress me so much about Ascend is I, so far in both maps, they lost the first pistol, lost the second round, which is arguably worse in the second half of the last map, and then I think they lost both pistols here as well. Mm -hmm. like they are a team that basically seems to fight from behind every single time. And it just shows how good they are in their buy rounds. Like they are fantastic when it comes to the utility, the executions, and even just individual aim. Like, they're off the charts in terms of this roster. Now, we're going to see the Viper's Pit popped very early on. Chronicle also utilizing his Tour de Force. It's going to be a tough round for Ascend to find space, but ultimately, there has to be a gap somewhere. And they've got plenty of time to find it. I think that that Viper's Pit, it allows you to just cover everything else, have that site secure, and it's whether you want to try to throw all of your utility at the Viper. I think if you have a Sova, you see a lot of teams move towards it and attempt that, but, but the comp that Ascend are running... I think they can still do that, right? They've got their trailblazer. They've got flashes to try and maybe catch how close the player is, really approximate their position. You've got your seekers as well to go on in, a haunt to try well, and reveal. Like, they've got the, Nightfall. I, I feel like that's probably Nightfall one of the best well, yeah. counters you could possibly have to force him back. They just want some other space elsewhere. Rengar's not pretty, but he gets the job done. There now is Nightfall. Nightfall has been used straight away. They're going to leave Nat stuck in a corner. And, and actually, I thought Starzo got the kill. Eventually, he will be isolated. But now the spikes drop with 30 seconds. Right on top as well. Look at that served up on a platter Perfect. for Chronicle to hold with the operator. Is Defo covering his close push? All he worries Ooh. about is the top, but Monster wins it. Of course he does. He's fallen, though, and that spike needs to be picked up and brought over. Shados just needs to survive. He knows time is on his side, at least he thought. Oh. I thought it was. He goes out and catches back on the way to site and wins the round. Anyways, Mech, and another close victory, but a victory nonetheless. Their defensive side still one round behind. And uh, I thought Ascend might be going for an eco here. Yeah, okay. It looks like they've decided three rifles and not quite enough. They're going to go for a mix buy. Keep money for the next. 
Yeah, I, I, I think that definitely one of the real positives of playing that Fade versus a Viper is just that ult. Like, it's such a fantastic counter. I wouldn't even be surprised in the future if a Viper's pit goes down. You almost have that counter exactly the same way you do with a Hunter's Fury in a lockdown. Because it's almost yeah. just like, you know exactly where the player is. You can blind them, stun them, and leave them half HP. It's, it's as good as it gets. Here comes the drone on the other side to try grab information. Spam good for Chronicle. He's covered out Redgar, allowed him to get into a slightly wider position, but he's being spotted and now swung on. Shock Dart down. It might be his final gesture. His teammate going to swing around the back, though, to try and trade out. Nats doing more than just trying, though. He's taking a triple and leaving this round well and truly into mech's hands. Again, sight control, spike control. And they've spotted the final player. If there was anyone, especially within this match so far, even looking at last week's performance, I feel like Monster's the man you rely on. So good at isolating jewels, so good at utilizing any utility he has, and although there's definitely some limitations there, they've got to be careful. Spotting him, though, that's going to make things quite a bit easier. Even still, though, now every single player has at least taken a little bit of damage on the other left. side. Of course, they've healed up Nats, but he would still be one bullet away from falling. They're just not giving him anything. Sheer patience out from the side of Mech, and, well, he does well to attempt to isolate the jewel, but Nats is more than prepared. At the start of this game, I think they probably do give him a little bit of space. You know, they probably do push in and give away a couple of duels, but... As Sand have shown, they're not here to play around. They're losing pistol rounds and still making these games hyper competitive. And we were at 10 to 9 right there. That's exactly the kind of clutch that Ascend would win, that Monster would win. Yeah. Uh, and that Mech would lose to give them a third map and end, end up having this series a lot more uncomfortable for them than I'm sure they want. I'm glad that we saw them stick together and play that in a much tighter way. Still plenty more rounds on offer, 10 to 10. Both teams on a buy. Both teams having one ulti to play with. But it's CNED, Operator in hand. Tour de Force back pocket. Mid peak for Chronicle, though, is what finds the opening. And I thought we were about to see the uh, the chamber battle, but a little preemptive peak from Starzo made sure that didn't happen. And actually, Shados is going to re aggress. I, he's been superb today, as said. Like in some of the losses they had, I feel like him being absent was a huge difference maker. Same for Chronicle, but both players have performed fantastically well in the matches so far. And while you can see Chronicle just being that little bit cheekier around the aggressive angle, back as well. Now he could throw out a Prowler. It seems like he's just going to push it, not expecting anybody to still be this close. And again, it's the multi frag machine. Shados with a triple to completely shut the round down, and Mech make their way to 11. It was starting to look like Ascend were dragging this one back, but now, Mitch, economy in the bin, CNED's Tour de Force, and maybe a Viper's Pit is the only sort of viabilities they have for this round. Yeah, you can see if CNED gets a few picks, they get to sight, they get a plan, sure, maybe things can go their way, but it's a long shot. It most certainly is. Mech are in control, and Ascend have called a timeout. Perfect time for it. With a couple of options on hand, they need to consider their options very, very carefully. But at yeah, this point... I, I think they, mm -hmm. they bought an op into the last round, so clearly they're saving Tour de Force whenever they have, like, economy issues. Like, mm -hmm. if they can still purchase, then they'll never actually utilize it. I think the CNED has to do something here. Getting the Viper's Pit and maybe just having a Spectre, getting them in towards that A site would definitely be valuable. The only problem is when you've got a Hunter's Fury on the other side, it... it becomes again a, a tougher ult to play around like you can't be as reliant on it because that position can very easily be cleared i also think mech have done very well even though like some of the rounds haven't worked to aggressively play when those ults are online so for example i'm pretty sure one of the last times that monster has his viper's pit was around where they aggressively push deep into b because they were like okay if we just don't let him get to the site where's he going to use it Out of charges. keep up You want Very light on mid. Play. This time around over on mech, they're looking again for this A aggression Same inside again. a cave. Yep. Going up. Taking the fights. Players have been spotted though. They've been stunned as well. Here comes the big peak and it's uh, not going to Sen's way until Monster uh... comes in with a judge. Attack side. <laughs> Get the hell out of here. 
could play that inside his Viper's Pit now. But he's going to walk out rifle in hand with his teammates as they go towards the site. They look to secure it and get that plant on through. Tom, they have the advantage. He's he just, what? He just marshaled him. He just marshaled him through the Viper's Pit. That is grotesque. And now the Viper on the other side has to try and do the same. It is left onto Nats. He's going to hear the spike being planted. He might actually be able to even know exactly. Yeah, you can see the ring of exactly where it's been placed. Just going to try and go through the other side. But Zeke denies a ridiculous round from Ascender. Marshall through smoke, two kills on a judge. And while well, Mech, as, as said, I said, I feel like their ideas of how to deny that ultimate are fantastic. Unfortunately, you're playing into Ascend and their reaction was even better. That's ridiculous. Not even that, it's the fact that you have a judge by. That's why I'm so happy they called the pause. I guess realizing that, hey, if we can manage to get to site, get a plant on, and I'm the one planting, Viper's Pit, judge. You know, chances of winning the round, got a times 100 from the eco they started out on, but the situation had ended up being so useful in uh, what is going on. Two frags as quick as can be, aggression down on a main and on mid that finds them two frags and ascend in literally the blink of an eye are left in the dust after a phenomenal previous round tom they again need a clutch to even have a chance yeah i, I feel like so many of these aggressive rounds have just been here's the mid peak 50 50 and actually chronicle it looked like he had an opportunity here this could be a problem seeker's gonna give away nats Redgar's position also going to be noted, trying desperately to spam through. We'll eventually break that secret, and Defo's on that rotation already, but look at Zeke. He's so well primed to just cause them issues. It looked free, but somehow Defo survived at least a little longer. Zeke needs to shut out this kill, but with the weapon in hand, oh. it's not going to go well. And now it's left on to Shados, but again, this man is clutch as hell. He's got a great position too. Zeke has no idea where he is. Super low in HP. Steps were heard moments ago. The wind conditions were there and they were already ticked for Shados. That is 12 to 11 as Max steam on into the lead and look to take this here and now. I mean, it has been a close game all the way along, Tom. And we're going to end it round number 24 with Ascend full buying up. They've got all the rifles, well, four rifles and some finger guns on Starzo to work with. It's still a strong round from them, but not where they want to be making their final stand to push to OT. I don't know. Sometimes I genuinely believe in Ascend more when they have a buy like this. After what we've seen throughout this match, it can be so difficult to play against Defo. He's had his moments on this defense, but definitely been quieter than what we saw in that first half. Cned taking so much space already and straight up Nightfall. It's going to catch some of the players at least, giving that information over. The finger guns are doing their job, Mitch, as already they've got that double opener into the site and there is nothing that could be done by Mech to deny this plant. It's just the sheer pace of Starzo coming at you with the support oh. of Util in the background. Missed shot on the cross. Wallman connect? I think I, I might have connected. Back, Either way, back in Zeke are super low. There's a chance. Looks like a send might have done enough here. Another hero needed to step up on Mech. They're starting to close in on the site. Starzo spotted, taken down. Good trade, though. Two to one. As a 2v3 comes into play. Op shot rings out. No connection. Time on their side. And now the kills. Well, they come flooding in. Ascend have bought themselves an overtime on Max map pick of Breeze. It's not over yet, Tom. It's just getting started. Yeah, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Uh, especially with the news that uh, my favorite map is being taken out of the pool. The fact that it is the third in this series, I am desperate to get there <laughs> so I, one last I, try I, I would not normally a nice and impartial you know nice and, unless it's na versus eu but nice and impartial but uh yeah I, I i desperately want to get towards that third and final map and well 12 to 12 a banger of a series fighting tooth and nail opener seemingly meaning nothing as either team can fight back into contention yeah. and well I don't know who's going to take this over the line. I have no clue. Um, it's a good thing we're not 
Relying on you to tell us, Tom. That's what we got the OT for. A little bit of a tech pause before we get on into things. Give the teams a breather, you know? Maybe the, the shirt change might need to come through again. I wouldn't blame MBS if he's a little sweaty after that one. Certainly a tough half for Ascend. And, mm. you know, facing down the barrel of a gun the way that they were. And, you know, a lot of it felt like the carrot was sort of being dangled in front of their face. Like they're constantly winning these rounds that they almost shouldn't. And then immediately it's answered back uh, by Mech on the other side. And then right after Monster comes through and like double judges players grabs his ult. <laughs> Just, then they start marshalling players through the old like it's just being wild. No T kicking off here. Oh, has seen it's gone He's through gone the wall. Through bear in mind, he also doesn't have any shields to play with behind this. So this has a huge risk alongside it, but he's managed to find the opener. Defo down already, but they don't seem to be slowing down. Door closed within their face, and Cena's found another. Already making this round look like it's dead to right to slide through. Oh, it's not pretty. He stunned up, so can only fire the isolated bullets, and now Redgar's the last man standing a monster. is not giving him the time of day. 13-12 in favor of Ascend. A chance to take things to split. And now, well, they move over onto that attack to try and find themselves another round. I mean, yeah, Tom, I'm not sure how uh, you feel about that one, but the pace, completely different. I mean, it almost felt like we were watching the Ascend attack with the way Mac are going into that site. They're trying to take the space. It felt like they lose their opening duel and they decide, no, that, that's our space taker gone. We need to take space off the back of it. Keep pushing forward, make this worthwhile. Make sure he didn't die for nothing. But in the end, he did. Oh, it's That's such so a good. beautiful combo. The same slide, the flash in combination with it from Zeke. That is one of the... I, it's so slick watching this team play with some of those little sort of tricks that they're throwing in to find those opening picks. Now with Chronicle gone, the top fragger so far for Mech, someone who has been phenomenal on this map for a long time, well, he's going to rely on his teammates to bring it back. Here comes the wall. The information there for Defo. With an operator, there's just not a whole lot you can do. Spamming. That's what takes up his time for now. I see Starzo creeping his way on in, and no one's watching him right now. I think in spawn, though, Nats has this jump up oh. spotted, and he's going to get a kill for his trouble. Shados as well answers up onto CNED. This isn't over yet. Mech, don't want to let this one go. Flash on back sight, catches Monster back. Needs to try and. Grab something to help his buddy out. It's an operator in his hands now on a good shot. One found. Oh. Unfortunately, that's all that they're going to get. We're going to another OT. Yeah, no, a fantastic retake. Like, you you have to bear in mind, that was a 4v5 after an opening onto Chronicle. And I, I guess when you end out the round, it doesn't really feel like that. They made things look very easy. They were very much expecting a lot of the aggressive pushes to come through. I, I think that's the one thing I will say is Starzo is fantastic at getting you into the site. But a lot of his agent's abilities become almost counterintuitive once he's in. Because you, you see the amount of times where... Like, th there was a round where he pushed in onto yellow as well, like, uh, uh, aggressively. That was, okay, it was space that was valuable, but they isolate him, and there's nothing his teammates can do. The same again there on the stairs. It's like, you can stick around that angle, sure, but then if somebody pushes mid, you're basically dead. So he has to get aggressive, and because of that, 4v4, and then they get isolated again. So there has definitely been some weird moments. I also say, I don't know if it's the same with this technical pause. The last technical pause was because Shados was having some FPS issues. It is the same, Which yep. is ridiculous considering how well he seems to play. Because I'll be honest with you, Mitch, I feel like when players have like a few, like slight issues, they don't really bring it up. They just carry on. It's only when it mm -hmm. gets like significantly worse that then they start being like, okay, I need a tech pause to try and sort this out. Blah, blah, blah. So that means that he's currently 25 with 15, probably playing with some general FPS issues and then in some rounds they've got worse which I, the man's just too good <laughs> and this this is what we warned about when you see a team like mech become a team when they're no longer what they have been this season which is Nats and one other player having a good game or a good couple maps and other than that a pretty chaotic and and sometimes lost team when it came to some of the more standard rounds. So the, I would say the fundamentals, the basics. And it's strange to see Mech in that in that sort of situation. But now 
We're seeing them show back up. We're seeing what Chronicle's capable of, even flexing out his agent pool a little bit. Again, you know, I'm going to find an ult that, that this man can uh, can fire out successfully. Maybe it's the tour de force for him. <laughs> it's, been, it's been good. It's been much better than the showstopper. <laughs> um, but yeah, much better than the orbital strike, that's for sure. Well, still obviously just waiting for those few FPS issues to reduce to the point where Chronicle feels like he can still hit headshots, of course. Shados. I, I think... Is. Yes, yeah. Shados, of course. But uh, yeah, I, I think ultimately both teams starting to look a little bit better in terms of their individual form. Like, I don't think there's really a weak player within the server right now. Okay, I, I, we we'll, again, we'll always see Defo nearer the bottom of the board, especially when it comes to that attacking half, just because his role within the team is so absurd. Like, they're still very much playing that old school, like, jet dash aggressive play. And and the thing is, especially when it came to their split previously and, and he was picking up Neon, I would love to see him try and pick that up here because I think that although he's able to take more space, I feel like the way that Starzo is currently playing and with these cool combos they had to sort of take mid aggression and get those individual fights, I just think it's more viable right now. I'm curious to see the the pace change out of Mech. I think last time over committing to losing that early duel, and we're seeing Defo as well, you know, on this attack side. If he's going to be going in like that, you you've got to be doubling down on it. You've got to be following up. But Asen seemed to be able to topple those dominoes whenever it's set up that way. I'd like to see Mech attempt something a little bit different. Um, I mean, maybe it doesn't have to be a different strategy. It can be same site. But I see the operator in Defo's hands, and that certainly indicative of the slower play that I'm hoping to see towards the B site. Tom, uh, I mean, I hate to tell you this, but just look at the B site. We've got uh, we've got Starzo about to blitz his way through, so this could be a little bit spooky. Yeah, I, I, feel, I feel like this is such a risk, but I guess it's mainly because we will see this sort of pressure into mid and A much more often. But they don't even have anybody playing around Shaw. And unless that's going to be something that's attempted by Cena a little bit later, but he doesn't really have... It, like, unless they're going to wait, which I'm guessing by Starzo's position, they're not. He's not going to be anywhere near the point of actually being able to support his team. This all comes down to whether or not Defo is going to be able to find this or Shados is going to be able to follow up and back him up on that. But the Shados has his rifle out, or, or a flash, I think, most likely. Um, Chronicle to play this angle, and there you go. The two of them swing in. Defo and Chronicle, good for the frag. And they even force the TP out of CNET, so they lose a lot of space. Plus, a player that's been a, a huge thorn in the side for Mech so far. I mean, Starzo's been able to really catch them off with those stuns, with some of those pacey takes, and now that's no longer a factor they have to con consider at all. Uh, okay, this is... They're watching it. Yeah, they are watching for it, but th this could be such a huge 1v1. Like, no matter which player goes down, it's going to be awkward for either side. Now, I will say we saw this battle earlier in the pistol, and maybe there's a little bit more hesitation, but even just the, the depth of map control that they're able to take, it does, however, almost sell a bit of a false positive. And look at this screen. Definitely more of an intriguing one. That kill is big, though, because now they have to try and clear some of the angles back into cave, which is not going to be easy to do. Monster through the halls. There's the reward. He's found one. They know where he is, though. So that is what it comes down to. The door closed and spike planted. Mech get to reset. Players coming in from above. The operator spotted, taken down, and that still hasn't revealed his position just yet. They know there's an operator far back. You also know you're against Nats, though, so you got to be ever vigilant, ever cautious, and now they know where he is, the sound, what they have to go off, the snake bite. Back is in a lot of danger, but he swung at the right time, out and around the corner, dodging the opposite he goes, but not ready. Monster coming behind, snake bite out, but he needs to get on that spike. He has his ult to play with an extra snake bite. Defo's going up on top. Now making his way around the time is crucial. He spots it's clear and he even gets the quick scope onto him. That was so fast. 14 to 13. Mech have a chance to close it out here and now. I think you've just seen the difference of a defo that has to dash head first into a site and a defo that's almost given the role of the star. Because just patient play. The early pick, I said I didn't really like the plan 
from Ascend. Like, I understand it, but it is so reliant on basically nobody being there. Like, you're almost hoping that there's no one in that position because there's no flash. There's nothing that's really being put into place to deny that swing. And the swing through is, it well, you're just reliant on you hitting the headshot before Defo has an op shot. And I wouldn't be reliant on that any time. Then you just have the reposition in the mid round for Mech. And I, I think that was the play that basically won it for them because they lost out on the fact that they didn't have anybody clearing cave because that duel was actually won by Monster. Again, he's doing so well on this A site. But what they do is they then plant for spawn. They plant for the defender spawn and fight into it so that nobody can get off the angle. You're either facing into an operator again of Defo or you have to swing past Nats. Neither is a good play to make. Sure, it still comes down to the one versus one. It still comes down to Monster trying to take it over the line. But by that point, time was bought and ultimately he needed an insta kill. Having to, having to get it done on the attack isn't ideal. I'm looking at Cena, though, up in hand as well. There. Could be that difference maker for them. Interesting trap. Covering the push all the way around through the back. I think they're expecting some aggression on the other side. I think after the last couple of rounds, what we sort of saw it on the defense was where Mech really got aggressive and really tried to take the fights. Chronicle, uh, there's a very high chance he gets isolated here. He's going to go running around and Starzo has a gap. Defo again with the operator is given the opener, but it's an after plant for Ascend. Yeah, I just wonder about, I'm staring at that trap almost the whole time. Like why there instead of any other place? But fair enough. That's interesting. I wonder if they're reading into something that they've seen. Either way, Mech not going near the spawn. They're making their way into the B site. Down through the elbow. Oh, Flash in main. Sees nobody. They've got good control. They'll look to take the site now. Snake bite through. Good reveal as well. That, no, it's landed on two targets, but Starzo still to be dealt with. He buys his teammates some times as they reposition. And well, now they're safe as can be. Shados left to do it all, and he will not get it done this time. Another overtime to be played here on Breeze. Mech, not quite able to close it out this time. Sides. Yeah, time. I, I feel like we're almost just watching teams take different gambles. We saw the aggressive B stance that Ascend had in their defensive half, and then the more passive one that came in on the other side. But I feel like the more passive one actually plays further into the hands of Ascend because they have such strong executions right now. Like we've seen it off the back of Starzo and his utility. He'll take the space and he even gets the opener onto Chronicle. And that's the thing. I feel like a lot of players right now try to work out a way to play around Starzo's utility and he just seems to do it better. Strange to see a sand with literally nobody around mid. I mean, th this is a team that's been getting in Mech's face quite a bit, and now they're they're moving this into a much, much more passive play. Mech, in the same regard, moving up through elbow, slowly working this mid control. So you get this really slow early round as they try to pick each other off, and it's the operators that end up in a tussle. CNED coming out convincingly on top. Again, now this becomes a lot tougher they've been very reliant as always on defo to either take the space or to find them the opening pick shados actually switching up onto the operator just trying to find somebody to face off against but the shot will be heard the only real worry right now is sort of what you mentioned i'm just looking at nat slowly making his way up through mid this is something they have to be aware of but ultimately he's managed to garner an awful lot of space here they go on the way in. That already going to be dropped as Nats falls. They lose their wall now on the way through. Opens up the line of sight. CNET trying to grab himself a shot with the operator. He's heard reloading and stepping up to the wall. That's a little bit of info to play with. They know about the player behind him, but they have absolutely no idea where Zeke can be. The trap watching the back, though, and this late flank out from Redgar might get them a ton of value. Jados up close. Good for the kill. There's Redgar's flank completed, and... Zeke coming through B main doesn't realize that they have now cleared every other angle and they're just staring at him as he completes his flank at long last. 15 to 14. Mech secure another chance to close this series without Match a third point. map being played. 
it, it really does seem right now like the first kill of the round is almost irrelevant. Like both teams have done so well of almost playing back in. And I think a lot of it might just be how shaky everything seems to become. It's almost like, okay, we got ourselves into a position where we have the advantage. I don't want to overface. I don't want to overaggress. And you see it in that round, they give up so much map control. Now, it was definitely something that they knew about. The problem is then you have that execution where you're so wary about mid because you've given it up that, well, they make it through in another spot. Very cautious by Ascend. Starzo, the furthest man back. Not too often you'll see that. But I think the time will come where he's blitzing forward to take that space for now, though they just haven't spotted anyone. You can see, look, that our Seeker, right? Even goes into cave. It goes way down. They're clearing it out. They're worried. Like, have these guys pushed up? Mech have been doing that. They've been making some aggressive plays. They've been catching Ascend on the back foot at times. If not Ascend, have been pumping the gas. And I guess Mech have tried to react. At this point, though, Ascend are getting nothing. None of the play that they were fearing Mech would make is coming through. And so with 50 seconds left, they've got to take some space. They've got to make their own play. And that might not work out how they think. Nats is in an unusual position for an OT, but they've spotted him. Now things get dangerous. Apparently not. He dinked up Starzo through the wall. Oh! Starzo tries to bait the steps, but he's found that kill as well. Defo. He's been noted, his position given up, but it's Monster to actually refrag. Even still though, he needs a whole lot more if they're gonna turn this around. But suddenly, a couple of kills go in their direction. A plant being baited in, but Chronicle's landed the shots. Once again, it's onto this man, Defo whiffs, but Chronicle will not. It is Mech to take themselves the victory in this series. And unfortunately for Ascend, they fall. An impressive display out of Mech, Tom. After a couple weeks of up and down performances, shaky games here and there. It's good to yeah. see them right back in form and actually showing us that there is a whole lot more depth still to this team than what we've seen so far. Having a series without Nats at the top of the scoreboard, in fact, very damn close to the bottom of it, is a, a refreshing sight because so far, it, I think they've been kind of two-dimensional in a lot of their games in, in terms of who we expected yeah. to show up, how they would. But this win right here, this puts all, uh, instills a lot more faith in them for me. Uh, than what I had coming into this series. Yeah, I, I think the other thing to note is just the fact that we sort of started at the beginning of the day saying that there are no easy games right now. I think the top yes. six is the most stacked that's ever been. Mech looked the weakest. They've won their first one. And now we get to take a look at who the player players of the match are actually going to be. And I, I genuinely think that at this point, you probably could put anyone on the board. I think they've all had a great game. Mm. I do think for me today, it's between Chronicle and Shados. I think Shados step up from what we saw before has been monumental. But Chronicle was still the man, I think, top fragging in both maps. So mm -hmm. if you go for either of those two, I'm very happy. Nats, he should get it every other week, but I think this time maybe not. Yeah, yeah I think this might be the one week where Nats is an MVP. 100% agree with you. Well, folks, at Valley Sports underscore EMEA on Twitter, get your votes in now. The analyst desk will let you know who won in just a couple of minutes because, of course, we have got another game coming up, folks. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right Bye. with you after this break. Welcome back, everybody. Our victors have been decided, and they did it by their own hands. It's Mech, and they move forward to face off against the Guild. But before we break things down, we have our interviewee joining us from the victors. Redgar, congratulations. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm doing great. Long time no see, I guess. I hope that we'll meet each other tomorrow, too. <laughs> yeah, I certainly hope so for you. And today, you get a big victory here against your opponents of Ascent. Talk to me about Bind first, yeah, because we were looking at the map um, picks in this. Bind, well, Breeze, well, how would this actually go for you? And you ended up taking Bind. So what, what happened there for you? I don't know, was it like the surprise for you that uh, we switched all our other compositions, but after all these things, <laughs> we find out that right now it's like the best for us to go and play like, like we played before. And oh, no. how you can see, it was the right decision. Maybe we're not known that we mm -hmm. like to risk a lot. Mm -hmm. And right now our risk was like, we have a really great result because we risked like that. All right, well, you went on to Breeze right after, and 
let's just say it was back and forth the whole time, including and especially the multiple overtimes that we ended up having. What seemed to be the biggest kind of hurdle for you to overcome on Breeze to actually get the win? I guess they're playing like really not the default composition on the breeze that you can play like you can train versus each other's teams. That's why they have like a unique play style. We know that what what they are doing, but sometimes we just like can hit our shots and it makes us a lot of things. I guess it was like that's why we had uh, scores in the end. I mean like we have other times. All right, and finally, now you move on and you get to play against Guild. Now, a lot of people are saying, should that match actually happen, which it will, you have a clear shot at making it to Copenhagen. All you need is one more best of three win. How do you think you'll fare for that game? Uh, I think that we're pretty confident. Like, after we've been won the playoff spot for us, we were like, we have a second chance and mm -hmm. we should catch it and grab it and qualify for the market. So... That's what we are doing right now, you know? Very much so. And with the team being as excited as they always look like when, especially on the interviews, I'm uh, very happy to, to see that things actually went well. And we'll see how you guys will be doing against a guild tomorrow. Until then, take care and good luck. Thank you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye -bye. Goodbye. Is that a fun team to talk to or what? I love how no matter who sits in the chair, they just keep such a straight face. They're like, I am very used to this. This is the normal shenanigans of the house. Enjoy. Yeah, Red Guy's job is to cat hurt those guys. I also like that their like their attire for their team is just the uh, the Masters merch. To be fair, which yeah. is nice enough anyway, and also pajama bottoms, which look incredibly comfy. They today. really did. Actually, why are we seeing so many players twerking at the moment? First it was Boaster, Boaster. then it yeah. was like Defo and Shados. Then I did it. I don't want to... No more. You did it? Hey, you doubled the viewership because of that. Thank you very much. Yeah, we'll see if it happens. I don't think I'll need to <laughs> these series, to be fair. So I'll, I'll keep it... I was going to say I'll keep it in my pants, but that sounds <laughs> You keep your pants on yeah. for this one. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, please, yes, is what we're hearing from production. That's all you need to know. <laughs> that one is an extra subscription that you go for in <laughs> after hours. Though, moving on, trying to break down what happened in this matchup, specifically on Breeze, a 2-0 mm. victory for a Mech. And what a Breeze. I mean, we were looking, we were watching at this game, sitting in the green room and thinking, oh my God, another overtime, another back and forth. We mentioned Tom Casting as well. It's, uh, it writes expected. itself. I mean, Mech have not lost this map for 300 days, 24th of August last year. So, so it's now gone to be 300 10 maps? Yeah, it, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a long time. And they haven't really had the chance to play it that much because teams have been very smart to ban it out and not let Mech play on this map at all. But because Send is, is still adjusting, right? They've never played Fracture with this new lineup. It almost kind of felt that as soon as that first map went down, Mech were clear favorites to win out yeah. on that map. But I didn't expect it to go that close. And Ascend to honestly look really good. They really did. Losing. Yeah. They really did. I, I do want to give a shout out to Ascend, specifically Monster. I mean, the way that that man is a one man um, army, it's like the perfect nightmare. Like, I would hate to go up against him. How many times did they avoid the A site as a result of him? I mean, that just goes to show how much control, how much dominance he had. But for Mech to be able to overcome that, even though Ascend did throw a few different counters at them, especially in OT, so that first round of OT, and I'm like, they've learned their lesson about mid, they've been able to flash out, get rid of Chronicle, and my God, speaking of Chronicle, he was the man of the hour for me. I know we set it up about, you know, the Chamber players, the casters started to speak about it, and then the story kind of just played out in front of us, and I went, yeah, that's the man for it. Yeah, I, I also think that, like, Monster was superb. There's something about him on this, oh. despite being on the losing team, putting in a hell of a performance, but I think that a lot of it came down to Chronicle versus Shados. Like, they were playing different agents, but mm. I think Chronicle was eight and four against him, so yep. the 12 fights that they had Chronicle won eight of them, and also Stacks had six first deaths. I'm pretty sure all of them were Chronicle yeah. shutting him down in mid, for example. It was a whole battlefield between those two, and I think certainly comparing Chronicle to Cned, right? Like Cned played better than he did on the first map. Absolutely, yes. But it's still not like Chronicle levels. And the reason we want to sort of put these two players head to head, not just because they play the same agent, but stylistically, the way the Chronicle plays Chamber is so different to Cned. I don't think if that I put clips side by side, took their names off, you would think they were the same player by any means you could distinct them very carefully and i think that it goes to show that chronicle understands the power angles he understands where he needs to be in the early round mid for example was just his playground for round after round whereas cnn 
I don't like him that passive with it. I don't think that's where his strength lies. I do truly think he can be more aggressive as a chamber player if he wanted to. He can be that pseudo Julius. We are putting a brand new title and role for, you know, the chamber players to be. I'd like him to command the space with it. I, 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 I know he's got another Julius there to work with, mm. but how about hold hands and go and do that yeah. together? How about it? I, I think one of the things I liked about Cena's performance at Champions was that he was the best Jet in the world. Absolutely. But he didn't play like Ye does, where it's super aggressive, right? Yep. It's a bit more passive. And I think that's why Ascend looked really good when we went to overtime, because the ops started to come out more frequently. But Defo showed up massively. Oh, yeah. that, that was a perfect team performance. And I think Tom said it best. First kill didn't matter, because both these teams were really good at being mm. in a 4v5 and still managing to win out rounds. It was so back and forth oh. that both of these teams look insane. And it was a great series despite a 2-0. Yeah, and our player of the match is Shados. So Ooh. congratulations I did to not Shados, expect that. player yeah. of the match for this game. Yeah, I mean, honestly, there's a big performance yeah. for everybody, really, on these two teams. I mean... Could have been any of them. Absolutely. Just sort of expect the Nats to be there because it's Nats, right? So exactly. the fact that Shados wins it shows, like, that's just a night and day performance from groups to now. He had one of the best KDs in the entire team for the series as well. So I just think consistency over the series. Shout out to the viewers for spotting that. You know, he was the top dog for that. So, yeah, well worth.